This is Mission Control Houston. Good morning. Happy Martin Luther King Day. You are getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station's equipment lock. Just in the background there, Andrew Morgan is assisting Jessica Meir into the crew lock, getting ready for today's spacewalk to upgrade some of the batteries on the outside of the International Space Station. A little bit of head of schedule, Andrew Morgan helping EV-1 today. That's Jessica Meir. She'll be wearing the suit with the red stripes for today's spacewalk. Morgan is there in the crew lock, assisted by Luca Parmitano, helping our two spacewalking astronauts today. Jessica Meir already in that crew lock. Both experienced spacewalkers at this point. Jessica Meir with two total spacewalks, 14 hours and 46 minutes of total spacewalking time. This will be her third. For Christina Cook, this will be her sixth spacewalk, totaling 35 hours and 17 minutes of cumulative spacewalking time. Christina Cook will be EV2 wearing the suit with no stripes. Today's spacewalk to upgrade the lithium-ion batteries, uh, one of a series of spacewalks to do so, will be the 226th spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, designated as Spacewalk 63, the 63rd out of the Quest airlock. Again, Jessica Meir in the background there. She'll be EV-1 facing downwards towards the hatch. She'll be the first one out today beginning today's spacewalk at an estimated uh, 5.50 a.m. Central Time, though they're rocking through their procedures right now, so may get out a little bit early. Over on the left there, you can see Christina Cook. She'll be wearing the suit with no stripes, designated EV2 today, outfitted with all of the tools necessary for the battery swap. You can see in the foreground there the PGT pistol grip tool. It's a space drill that she'll be using to unbolt some of the old batteries and installing some of the new batteries. Luca Parmitano, station commander of Expedition 61. He's the suit IV, the intravehicular suit lead for uh, assisting Mir and Cook with the suit of activities today. Aided by Andrew Morgan of NASA. You can see Morgan bringing into frame something called a safer unit. This is, of course, an acronym, a simplified aid for EVA rescue. One of the final pieces of the suit to attach to the two spacewalking astronauts who have uh, earlier today already undergone some pre-breathing and in-suit light exercises to purge the nitrogen from their bodies. The safer unit is attached to the back of uh, sort of their backpack, which contains a lot of the portable life support systems, their air, their water, that they'll be using for their six and a half hour run today. The safer unit is essentially a jetpack. They'll be tethered throughout the uh, duration of today's spacewalk, but in the unlikely event that they were to become untethered, they can use this simplified aid for EVA rescue to propel them back to the safety of the International Space Station. But you'll hear throughout the duration of today's spacewalk them checking their tether configurations. In fact, once they get inside of the crew lock, it'll be one of the first things that they do, making sure that all their reels and cords and everything is perfectly aligned and situated in the way that it is expected before they head out the hatch to begin today's spacewalk at 5.50 a.m. Central Time. Of course, the astronauts are not the only ones that are uh, doing the work of replacing those batteries. Again, switching out the nickel-hydrogen batteries for the lithium-ion. They have the support of the ground teams here in Mission Control Houston. You're looking at the Orbit 2 team here, the second of three shifts that staff this room 24 hours a day in support of the International Space Station. Leading today's teams for Orbit 2 for the spacewalk is Judd Freeling, the second from this frame. In the foreground is uh, Flight Director T.J. Creamer. Judd Freeling will be the lead Flight Director for uh, Orbit 2 and the spacewalk to replace the nickel-hydrogen batteries with lithium-ion. Next to Judd Freeling is Mark Van de Heij, NASA astronaut. He'll be the CAPCOM, talking with the astronauts on the inside of the International Space Station.
to his right, Stephanie Wilson. She'll be the voice here in Mission Control Houston that you'll be hearing most frequently. She'll be taking on the role of Ground IV. From here in Mission Control Houston, she'll be the voice to two spacewalking astronauts, Christina Cook and Jessica Meir, guiding them through today's procedures to replace the lithium ion batteries, to replace the nickel hydrogen batteries with the newer lithium ion batteries. Of course, uh, many other spacewalk spa uh, flight controllers here supporting the overall international space station systems. And of course, uh, many officers here for uh, particularly this particular spacewalk, spacewalking officers and support personnel guiding them through the procedures, all preparing for today's spacewalk. This spacewalk, Spacewalk 63, uh, will be the final spacewalk to uh, replace the lithium ion batteries on the Port 6 truss. Our two spacewalking astronauts will go to the far end. If you're looking at uh, the International Space Station as it were flying, the far uh, left end from this view, looking f straight onto the International Space Station, it is the far right end. The Port 6. Um, the port six uh, uh, batteries are on the very far end. You can see uh, there. The ones they'll be working on are on the nadir side. They're the earth-facing side. You'll see. Uh, you can see from here the work site, the IEA. That's the Integrated Electronics Assembly. That's uh, the assembly where the batteries actually store the energy from collected from the solar arrays before routing downstream to various payloads and systems aboard the International Space Station. For this particular spacewalk, the International Space Station's robotic arm has situated a pallet. The EP worksite, that'll be the external pallet. This pallet was delivered on an HTV uh, Japanese cargo vehicle. It'll be situated right out, right next to the work site for the astronauts to go grab the last new lithium-ion battery for installation onto the IEA work site. There are two old batteries over on that work site. One of them will be stored on the IEA and the other one brought back over to the pallet. Now there are six batteries, um, six uh, uh, nickel-hydrogen batteries that are situated on the uh, integrated electronics assembly for this series of upgrades two of those nickel hydrogen batteries can be replaced by one single lithium ion battery it just needs a little adapter plate adjacent to it so you can see the configuration this will be the final configuration for one of the boxes over on that electronics assembly the lithium ion battery will be situated with the adapter plate next to them and the old nickel hydrogen battery will be stored on top of the adapter plate Now this is just one of the maneuvers. Uh, the other battery will be taken over to the external pallet. That external pallet uh, will have done its job delivering six lithium ion batteries. Mir and Cook will be, will be uh, outfitting the nadir side of the port six truss with three new lithium ion batteries. Just this past Wednesday, they've already installed two. They need to uh, bring over a new adapter plate and lithium ion battery to get that third one configured. The zenith side of the port six truss already configured from a spacewalks in October of last year. Some of the work on Wednesday's spacewalk was uh, in fact, it was done by these two spacewalking astronauts today, uh, Christina Cook and Jessica Meir. They got a little bit ahead of schedule. They got a little bit of the work that was originally scheduled for this spacewalk done. So really only a few uh, more steps left to completely outfit that integrated electronics assembly with the new batteries. The major tasks for today are to bring the new lithium-ion battery that's still on the external pallet over to the International Space Station, get it configured with the new adapter plate, and then move some of the old batteries around. One of them is going to remain on the electronics assembly, the other brought over to the external pallet.
after uh, Wednesday's spacewalk. The two spacewalking astronauts did were able to uh, clean their suits and make sure that they were prepared for today's spacewalk. Getting all their tools reconfigured and studying the new procedures now that they've gotten a little bit ahead of schedule. Some of uh, today's spacewalk includes some carved out time for get-aheads, just in case they do finish everything quickly. Here's a good snapshot of the task list that we just went over. Of course, uh, first they'll have to exit the, uh, in the uh, airlock and then go over to the work site and prepare the work site. This includes the installation of some, uh, a, some a portable foot restraint, getting their tools situated, some bags stowed in various locations that are most uh, strategic for installing the batteries. The first move will be taking an adapter plate from the external pallet and moving it to the International Space Station on one of the slots in the integrated electronics assembly. They'll move an old nickel hydrogen battery on top of that adapter plate once it's moved. Then that'll uh, free up the space to move the lithium ion battery that's currently on the pallet over to the International Space Station. Now these are sort of one-off moves, so this next one, the uh, nickel hydrogen battery to the pallet and adapter plate to the station, this one's a little bit more complicated because the astronauts will have to swap. They'll have to take that nickel hydrogen battery from the station, bring it to the pallet, and do a handoff maneuver where they'll hand off the old battery uh, over to the pallet and then take the adapter plate that was currently on that pallet and put the new, the old battery into that slot, then bring the adapter plate over to the station. Now those are two adapter plates. Uh, there's two lithium ion batteries on the integrated electronics assembly right now, but one of them still needs an adapter plate, and of course that other adapter plate is for that last lithium ion battery. Now this is a few less steps from Wednesday's spacewalk, so they have some cleanup of the work site itself before they actually get to some of those get-aheads. But even now, the two spacewalking astronauts and Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan assisting the duo uh, before they get prepared for today's spacewalk, even a little bit ahead of schedule. For those of you just tuning in, Jessica Mir situated with her feet towards the camera. She's EV-1. Mir will be wearing the suit with um, red stripes. And then uh, with the, her head facing towards the camera, that's Christina Cook. She's EV-2, the suit with no stripes. Each of them are given a helmet camera designation. So once they get out the hatch, they'll switch on their wireless video systems, They're the cameras that are mounted on their helmet, and we'll be able to get a good uh, POV perspective of the spacewalking astronauts as they go through their procedures. There's going to be a translucent number on the bottom of your screen for Jessica Mir as EV-1. Look for the number 11. And for Christina Cook as EV-2, look for number 18. Parmitano and Morgan. 63.6, we have uh, 4 and 18. Luca, copy, 4 and 18, good numbers, thanks much. So again, Parmitano and Morgan getting our two spacewalking astronauts situated in the crew lock. That about wraps up the procedures to uh, get them both into place, all their tools ready, or at least uh, about to be ready. Some of the extra tools and equipment being put into bags. The next procedures, uh, once they have everything they need, and it's inside the uh, crew lock there will be to close the hatch. Looks like uh, Andrew Morgan getting a head start already for closing the hatch. That'll be the last step before they begin the depressurization sequence. Right now the inside of the International Space Station is at a comfortable sea level pressure of 14.7 
pounds per square inch PSI. The next step, once they close the hatch, will be to depressurize that crew lock where the two spacewalking astronauts are. Now their spacesuits keep them at about 4.2 PSI, and they've been doing a lot of pre-breathing and in-suit-like exercise to purge the nitrogen from their bodies to uh, be in a good health, healthy situation to maneuver the suits. The 14 point or the 4.2 psi gives them that uh, maneuverability in the gloves. They're going to be doing a lot of dexterous manipulating of some of the tools, including uh, the space drill that they use to unbolt some of the old batteries and bolt in the new batteries. But the environment they're in now is 14.7 psi, so they're going to get that down to vacuum. The uh, steps, once they close the hatch, you'll hear some uh, humming noises once the depressurization begins from the space-to-ground loops. They'll depressurize from the uh, sea level pressure of 14.7 down to 5. From 5, they'll hold the pressure at 5 psi just to check for any leaks. And then if everything looks good, they'll proceed down to vacuum. Now, the spacewalk official start time doesn't begin at depressurization. It actually begins uh, shortly after uh, it's depressurized down to vacuum or towards vacuum. The suits themselves will be switched to battery power. Once they are, that mar marks the official start of a U.S. spacewalk. So just as Andrew Morgan was closing the hatch, we did have a handover of communication from the International Space Station. That'll, this will happen from time to time throughout today's spacewalk. But the ground controllers have uh, minimized those gaps, so we should be regaining that communication very shortly. You can see Andrew Morgan just before that handover was uh, closing the hatch. Uh, this was the last step before the depressurization sequence begins. It'll be Parmitano that'll be guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through those procedures. In the meantime, you're getting a live look at the International Space Station Flight Control Room. 
It'll be the teams here that will be guiding our spacewalking astronauts through their procedures and maintaining the health and systems of the International Space Station itself, plus the crew aboard. Of course, Luca Parmitano and uh, Andrew Morgan assisting the duo uh, through the suit-up activities. They'll also be helping our two spacewalking astronauts uh, during the spacewalk. Of course, on the end of the external pallet, which uh, contains a lot of the uh, old nickel hydrogen batteries, as well as the final new lithium ion battery still on that pallet. You have uh, the station's robotic arm holding uh, that pallet. It'll be Andrew Morgan at the controls of the station's robotic arm, maneuvering it ever so slightly to make sure it's in a good position for the reach of Jessica Meir and Christina Cook. Houston airlock on one, step 71. We are complete with step 70 and 71. Copy, we'll put step 72 in work and call you back when we're ready for 73. Mark. Good morning. Good morning, Drew. An airlock on one. We just wanted to check numbers with you. We show about seven minutes in pre breathe remaining. Yep, exactly. I'm counting 741. Okay, copy. Airlock Houston on one, the step 72 is complete. We are ready for step 73 and on. Okay, copy, Mark. And by the way, that also means for the EV crew that you are hot mic'd. EV1 copies, hello, Mark. EV2 copies. Hello, Jessica and Christina. Okay, Christina, our first check on the UIA is to check that the depressed pump power is off OFF. It is off OFF. Copy, and the LED is also off? Affirmative. Okay, copy. And uh, with that, Mark, looking for a go in 76. Pardon, one check uh, for you, Christina, yeah. is to check that the depressed pump enable LED is on. That's affirmative, and there's no power LED, just the enable LED that's lit. Copy all. And uh, with that, Mark, step 76. There we go. Copy, and you guys are so efficient that uh, we still got five plus minutes to wait. Copy. Give me one copy. So you heard it from the ground teams. Again, it's uh, Mark Vanahai, who is the Capcom here in Mission Control Houston, talking with the crew on the inside of the International Space Station. It'll be his voice that you hear throughout the beginning of today's spacewalk. 
Not much, though, because after um, once we get to that step 76 that they just mentioned, these are the steps for their pre-breathing exercise, and that's the final step before they again begin the depressurization of the crew lock. On the opposite side of that hatch, waiting patiently is Jessica Meir and Christina Cook, ready to begin their uh, procedures for today's spacewalk, replacing older nickel hydrogen batteries with the new lithium ion batteries. This is the final set of procedures to outfit the port six truss after today's spacewalk, the Port 6 truss will be fully upgraded with lithium-ion batteries, both on the Nader side, which is the side they're working on today, and the Zenith side, that's the spa side that faces the uh, space. The Nader side faces towards the Earth, currently has two lithium-ion batteries with one adapter plate. Today, on today's spacewalk, they'll be putting two adapter plates and the final lithium-ion battery. But you just heard from Capcom Mark Vandehei that uh, everyone, everything is going according to plan. In fact, a little bit ahead of schedule, so they're going to take a little bit of a breather, about five minutes, before they continue on with their steps to depressurize the airlock and begin today's spacewalk. The official start time of today's spacewalk will be, will be set, and the clock will start running when the suits themselves are switched to battery power. For those just tuning in, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook are on the other side of that hatch inside the crew lock. The crew lock is currently pressurized to the same pressurization where Andrew Morgan, who you see now in frame, and uh, Luca Parmitano just at the bottom of the equipment lock there. They're all in the same pressure right now, 14.7 PSI. That's the normal pressurization of the inside of the International Space Station. They're just waiting for that go-ahead to start the depressurization on the other side of the hatch to bring our two spacewalking astronauts, Jessica Mayer and Christina Cook, down to vacuum, heading towards the beginning of today's spacewalk. Coming towards the top of the hour here, 5 a.m. Central Time, ready to begin today's spacewalk. We should be hearing the call to begin depressurization here momentarily.
Airlock Houston on one, go for deep press per step 76. Copy mark, we'll go per 76, and we'll be transitioning to the crew lock, deep press, repress, cue card. We concur. Okay, Christina and Jessica, uh, Christina for you on the UIA. Switch the deep press pump power to on, and then wait 10 seconds. Deep press pump power is on, counting. Seconds. Okay, then you can take the depressed pump man ISO valve to open. Depressed pump man ISO valve open and copy. Okay, and as always, monitor your heat pressure gauge. It maintains less than 5.5. .5. Copy. Repeat copy. And you're starting to hear some of the hums from the crew lock. And Jim Morgan and Luca Parmitano, you're seeing in the equipment lock, just on the other side of the hatch, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook. Depressurization is underway. Now just under 11 pounds per square inch, coming down from 14. That 11 pounds per square inch confirmed from the other side of the hatch. Right now they'll continue depressurization down to about five pounds per square inch. They'll hold it at five pounds per square inch and do a leak check to make sure that everything is good to continue down to vacuum. Copy. Jessica and Christina, just a reminder that when we get to around 6.0, you can expect an alert tone and we'll be making our stop at 5 PSI. DV1 copy. DV2 copy. Copy.
Depressurization of the crew lock still underway. Now a little less than seven pounds per square inch. And over in 20 seconds. You heard that call from Capcom, Mark Vandehei. During the handover, we may lose video communication from the, uh, or of the crew. Looking at uh, Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan now on the other side of the hatch, uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook losing that coverage. Should be regaining it pretty shortly, though. Some of these handovers are small gaps. And the handovers themselves are handing over communication from the tracking and data relay satellites. These are uh, geosynchronous satellites about 23-ish thousand miles away from the Earth. To give you some perspective, the International Space Station is in low Earth orbit, about 250 miles. But those geosynchronous satellites provide the audio and visual communications. We're gaining a little bit of the audio now as we make our way down. Copy six. Just passing six pounds per square inch. The flight control team's here. You can see Judd Freeling, the second uh, from the frame. He'll be leading the uh, teams here through today's spacewalk. TJ Creamer, another flight director on the uh, front end of your screen. Next to Judd Freeling, to his right is uh, Mark Vandehei. That's the voice you're hearing from here in Mission Control Houston. Uh, after the uh, crew is depressurized and uh, starts to begin the procedures to switch to battery power and begin today's spacewalk, it'll be Stephanie Wilson who takes over from here in Mission Control Houston. Now regaining some of the video communication from the International Space Station, getting those views once again of Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through the procedures of depressurizing the crew lock. Still coming up on five pounds per square inch. You heard the call from Jessica Meir and uh, Christina Cook from the other side of the hatch. They've passed six pounds per square inch. Five is the holding point. We'll stop there for a little bit and check for any leaks before continuing down to vacuum. You know, if you would take the depressed pump man ISO valve to close. Depressed pump man ISO valve closed. Copy. Okay, on your DCMs, 
switch display status until leak check question mark is displayed and give it a long yes. Copy and work. Copy. And then follow the displayed instructions. V1 leak check in progress. Copy. Is this your leak check in progress? Now holding at five pounds per square inch, Andrew Morgan guiding Christina Cook and Jessica Meir through the steps for the leak check that's scheduled right on time at uh, five pounds per square inch. If everything looks good, they'll continue down to vacuum from there. One leak check complete. Setting option actuator to EVA. Two the same. Okay, copy. If uh, you would both let me know when you're both O2 actuator EVA. One option actuator is an EVA. EV2 is an EVA. Copy. ED1, ED2 are both O2 actuators EVA. Christina, we're going to resume the depress. Take the depress pump man ISO valve to open. You can expect an alert tone with that. Copy, and it is open. Copy. With that, uh, leak check performed. Everything looking good at five pounds per square inch. Their suits are configura configurated for spacewalking, and they've resumed depressurization. Now resuming from 5 pounds per square inch down to vacuum. Just another reminder to continue to monitor your suit P gauge is less than 5.5. Easy five. one copy. Easy two copy. Four point oh PSI. Copy. I've got airlock pressure 2.9. Copy. 
You heard a good read from uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook on the other side of the hatch, passing uh, three pounds per square inch. There's going to be a series of steps at two PSI to uh, continue down to vacuum and get everything configured before officially beginning the spacewalk. Even though depressurization has begun, the spacewalk start time officially starts uh, when the power on the spacesuits are switched to battery. And I'm showing you what pressure 2.0. Hey, copy. We're showing about the same here. So let's take the depressed pump man ISO valve closed. Copy. Okay, hey, copy on the UIA. Switch the depressed pump power off. OFF. Depressed pump power is off. OFF. Okay, copy, and we're ready for you to report your initial tether configuration. We're listening, and Houston's listening as well. Okay, I can see on the airlock steering extender, we have a waist tether, small hook, it's gate closed, slider locked. Large hook is gate closed, slider locked. Christina's right waist tether is attached to that waist tether. Large hook, gate closed, slider locked. And the small hook is gate closed and slider locked. Christina also has a waist tether on her left, steering extender. I can see that. The small hook is gate closed, slider locked. And her red hook is also on her left, steering extender. Gate closed, slider locked. The wheel is unlocked. And her yellow hook is on my red wheel. Gate closed and slider locked. On my right steering extender, I have a waist tether, small hook, gate closed, slider locked. Anchor hook, large hook is on my mini workstation. Also on my right steering extender, I have my red hook, gate closed, slider locked. My reel is unlocked and my yellow hook is on my mini workstation. Okay, we copy all here over to Houston, just make sure that we hit everything. Very easy to follow that report, thanks, and good config. Copy. Okay, copy, Mark. And uh, Jessica, when the crew lock DPDT is about zero, you can expect an alert tone. And when the EV hatch delta P is less than 0.5 PSI, you can open the EV hatch. Okay, copy. So all the uh, steps at two pounds per square inch are complete. Now at about 1.5, still continuing down to vacuum. But you notice that uh, two PSI, they did a tether configuration, so they're checking to make sure all of their cables and all of their wires are intact. And as expected, before they head out the hatch, they'll do it again once they actually exit the hatch, uh, just outside of the crew lock, make sure that everything is still good, because ultimately they're going to have to make their way all the way to the far port side of the International Space Station to do today's work of switching the batteries on the outside of that port part of the station. But in the meantime, we're still continuing down to vacuums, a little bit less than 1.5 psi at this time. We're going down to zero. Or at least uh, at least a half of uh, psi before the next uh, steps start. 
The official start time for today's spacewalk will begin when the power on the suits for Jessica Meir and Christina Cook, our two spacewalking astronauts today, when the power for those suits is switched to battery power. I'm still showing about one and a half on the gauge, and I haven't had an update on my pressure either. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be decreasing. You have the uh, antenna open, I'm assuming. Emergency antenna is open. Okay. And uh, our telemetry is showing the pressure is decreasing. Great. Happy, and now I'm showing one. Happy. I see zero point nine on my DCM. Copy. A little less than one PSI depressurized all the way from fourteen just a little earlier today. The depressurization started at about 5 a.m. Central. We're continuing down to uh, vacuum, or just about 0.5 psi, before the next set of procedures kicks in. But those next set of procedures will get us uh, to hatch open, and our two space ant walking astronauts will begin to. Uh, set up their tethers and gather their tools and exit the hatch. But before then, they'll switch the power in their suits to battery, and that'll mark that'll mark the uh, official start of today's spacewalk. is showing point eight. Happy.
Next is reading 0 0.6. Still making our way down to vacuum on the other side of that hatch. We're showing the same. It's a very similar. Copy. Making our way down to about 0.5 psi before the next set of procedures kick in. EV1 today is uh, Jessica Mir. She's, she'll be wearing the suit with the red stripes. She'll be the first out of the hatch today. Christina Cook will be wearing the suit with no stripes as EV2. Scan, how's the gauge look? We're shown to be uh, in the ballpark by our telem. Yeah, I see 0 0.5 now. Okay, and then looks like you can go ahead and open the hatch and stow it. Copy. Now I'm going to move down toward you a bit to get to the handle. Copy. And I am fully port and forward. It's unlocked and going for the unlatch. Copy. We are unlatched. You're unlatched, and we see you taking it to the stove position. And I just had an oxygen rate and SOP rate zero message. You hear the call that the uh, hatch is open. You can see the thermal cover flapping over. This is a view of the outside of the International Space Station's crew lock. The clock still hasn't started, though. Even though the hatch is open, they have to switch their suits to battery power first. OP is reading 4.9 on both the gauge and on my uh, DC Let's say 4.9 on the gauge and 4. Point, sorry, 4.8 on the gauge, 4.9 on the DCM. Copy. We're getting into the top checklist. Airlock Houston on yeah, one. We're looking at the, one more time. Airlock Houston on one. We're looking at the data, and we believe that was a momentary uh, blip. Still good to go, and we'll go for the EVA. Okay, EV one copies. Need any other status from uh, my DCM one?
No more status required, Jessica. We're go to continue. Okay, copy. Go to continue. We copy. Christina, the hatch is open, Copy. and it is in the hatch key, and it is night outside. Copy. Okay, and we copy. Good job. The EV hatch is open and stowed. The emergency MPEV is closed. And with that, to our Astro sisters, we wish you the best of luck on this. And Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Drew. Good morning, Jessica and Christina. On your DCMs, take your... Good morning. Yes, on your DCMs, take your power switches to bat, stagger switch throws, and expect a warning tone. Good work. D1, power to bat. D2, power to bat. Check display switch functional. EV1, display switch is functional. EV2, functional. One remark on my display. When I first trigger anything on my display, the text comes up um, rather faint, and then it brightens up after about a second delay. Copy, Jessica. So on your uh, DCM, initially when it comes up, the display is faint, but then after about a second, it brightens up. That's correct. And I've done that the past two times now. Copy, we're discussing. And it was ever since I had the uh, SOP warning. Copy. I have an SCU power avail message. As do I. Copy SCU power avail, and we ex expect that that's, uh, that's expected because we're still on battery power. I'm sorry, uh, still on SCU power. Copy. Copy. And Jessica, Christina, we're still discussing uh, Jessica's DCM. Stephanie, let me know if you want me to play with the uh, intensity dial or not. And that's at your discretion. Okay, copy. I'll leave it where it is.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, still in the process of switching that suit power over to battery. Still pulling, a, drawing a little bit of power from the station. You can see the hatch open, thermal cover open. Christina, we have discussed it. We have double checked the data. Our data looks good. All of the messages are explained uh, based on where we are in the procedures, and we're go to continue. Okay, EV1 copies and concurred. EV2 copies. Copy that. Then uh, for Christina on the UIA, take power EV1, EV2, two switches to off, OFF. Copy. Power EV1 and EV2 is off, OFF. I have the expected H2O is off message, as does EV1. Copy the expected messages. Check power EV1, EV2, four LEDs are off. They are off. Disconnect your SEUs from your DCMs and stow the SEUs in the pouches. Work. EV1 disconnected, stowed, and DCM covers in place. Copy EV1. EV2 disconnected, stowed, cover in place. Copy EV2. Christina, check depressed pump man ISO valve closed. It is closed. On your DCMs, take your temperature control valves to max hot. In work. EV1 is in max hot. Take water switches to on. EV1 water is on. EV2 water on. Check DCM blank, bite off. EV1 DCM blank, bite off. EV2 DCM blank, bite off. Take your temperature control valves as desired. And EV1 is set at 7. EV2 is set at 5. Copy 7 for EV1, 5 for EV2. We have good suit data on the ground, so no need to uh, report the uh, parameters. You can take your visors as required for night. And I'm sorry, I uh, missed one step here for checking your suit P gauge. Please report your suit P. EV1 is at 4.3. EV2, 4.3. Copy 4.3 for both EV1 and EV2. And we have taken care of the airlock VRIV step, so we are complete with the post depress cue card. With that, Jessica, you can egress the airlock. Okay, copy and work. As uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook continue through their procedures, you can see. Mir, the first out the hatch. Tina, I'm going to pause right here in order to do the tether inspection. Copy. 
She's going to inspect her tethers before making her way completely out the hatch, but we do have an official start time. The suits themselves were switched to battery power at 5.35 a.m. Central Time. Jessica, EV-1's tethers on the forward external D-ring and EV-2's on the aft external D-ring for the inspection of the load alleviating straps. EV-1 copy. So again, Mir is going to check her tether configuration here. We have a start time at 5.35 a.m. Central Time coming up on 10 minutes into today's spacewalk as Mir makes her way out the hatch, checking her tethers and beginning some of the first set of procedures before making their way out to the P-6, the Port 6 truss on the far side of the International Space Station. No red, no MMOD strike. 10 minutes in, coming out on an orbital night time. The station itself at the time uh, of the start of today's spacewalk at 535 was over the middle of the Pacific Ocean, about 259 statute miles above the ocean. The same for my tether, for EV-1's tether. No strikes, no red. Impact switches are all nominal. And we copy the inspection for EV-1's tether. Good tethers for both EV-1 and EV-2. Jessica, next, attach EV-1 yellow hook to safety tether reel on the forward external D-ring. in work. Again, 5.35 a.m. Central Time was the start of today's spacewalk. On my green reel. It's closed and slider is locked. I can see that the reel is unlocked. Copy. Attach forward safety tether green hook to EV-1 red reel. Work. Mir still in the process of making sure those tethers that are keeping her attached to the station are in a good configuration. She's hooking herself up to the right reels and making sure uh, everything is set because she's got a long journey ahead of her to go over to the Port 6 truss. Christina Cook, not far behind, will be coming out the hatch next during an orbital nighttime, perhaps daytime, only about two more minutes until the sun, sun starts rising. But after they both check their tether configurations and make sure they're in uh, a good position to start making their way, they'll start the translation or the movement over to the Port 6 truss. And it's remaining unlocked. And check gate closed. Gate is closed. Copy sunrise in under two minutes. And we're about 40 seconds from a 20 second handover. Next, attach EV2 yellow hook to safety tether reel on the aft external D-ring. Copy and work. Okay, Christina, your yellow hook is attached to your Another handover in communications from the International Space Station, handing over from one TDRS satellite to the next. Those are tracking and data relay satellites. This handover is expected to be pretty short. Should be regaining audio communication here momentarily and then video communication shortly thereafter. 
In the meantime, Jessica Meir helping Christina Cook through her tether configuration. Meir already at the hatch. Cook to follow. We're back with you after the handover, and we did not copy the full report of Christina's yellow hook. Copy. I have Christina's yellow hook on her green reel. Gate is closed and slider is locked. Check reel unlocked. Reel is unlocked. Copy. Attach EV2 green hook to EV2 red reel. North. Getting some of those video communications back from the International Space Station. The sun has risen, starting to illuminate the outside. Before you move, Christine, I'm just going to take a look to make sure that nothing is tangled here between those two steps. Great. Great. Mir continuing to work on the tether configuration, making sure everything's set before... ...before Cook makes her way out the hatch. I think as we talked about, I will move over to the aft side. Okay. And when they're happy and you're happy, I'll release my waist cover. Jessica, for EV2's green hook attached to EV2's red reel, can you verify gate closed and reel unlocked? Gate is closed and reel is unlocked. Copy that. That's a good tether config. Nice work. And uh, when you are positioned and ready, you can give Christina a go to release her waist tether from the waist tether on the airlock D-ring extender. Okay, Christina, you have my go. Happy and work. Okay, my waist tether is removed from the waist tether in the airlock, and that waist tether is now on the airlock handrail inside the airlock. Copy. And Katrina, I am over on the aft side. Copy. Houston copies as well. And Christina, when you're ready, you can prepare to transfer the ORU bag to Jessica. Jessica, I have that coming out towards you. Okay, and I stand by one. A little better position here for you. Just behind that thermal cover, you can see uh, the EV2 suit. That's uh, Christina Cook, her legs poking out. Jessica Mir has moved over uh, from this view to the right side, but that's the aft end of the station. Hand off some of the tools and tethers and make sure they're in a good configuration. Do you have it? I, I have a hold on it. I don't have a red on it yet. Copy. I've got a hold of it. Okay, Christine, I have my RET on it. Okay. And would you like to remove the airlock RET, or I can do that if I... Uh, it's on your side, okay. so I can't quite reach it now. Okay, I'll grab it and pull it towards me if that works for you, and then get rid of it, or do you want to do it after you get on your VRT? Um, you, can, you can take it now. Okay, and work.
it's yours. Okay, copy. All right, and then I believe my next step is to egress when you're ready. Okay, I'm going to just move this bag out of the way a little bit. I'm ready for you to egress. I should be asked enough to be out of your way. Copy. And there's Christina Cook. Again, she is EV2. She'll be wearing the suit with no stripes on her legs. The suit with red stripes on the thigh will be uh, Jessica Meir, off to the right from this view. And I'm going to use this adjustable just for a second. The secondary tether to me, I'm going to have to switch where the DRT ret is right now. This loops around the high safety tether. Okay, I copy that and just let me know if I can assist. Both astronauts will uh, continue to configure their tethers, make sure they're in a good position before they make their way out to the work site today, which is on the far end of the station. I've got it on my Whitney workspace right now. I'm just going to release that ret and then put it back on. And that's the far port end where there is uh, a new lithium-ion battery that needs to be installed on the outside of the station. That's the port six truss, the far port side the farthest sol solar array on the left side if you were looking straight on uh, with the International Space Station. Space Station now is over the Pacific Ocean still entering an orbital daytime. Now approaching the uh, western border of Chile here in a few minutes but still over the Pacific Ocean for a while. Copy, Jessica. Nicely done. When you two are ready, next is to close the thermal cover and buddy checks. Okay, and work. Comes thermal cover. Thermal cover is closed. Copy, thermal cover closed. Christina, you turn a little bit more toward me. I see your WVF. I see one, two, and rotate to your left. And your camera is covering up the other okay. tab. Let me bounce your camera. Okay, I see all your three tabs up. And I see your left paper handle is down. If you rotate your other way, and keep going, so it's your PGT is blocking it right now. Um, if you could switch, actually, or there it is. I see it now. It's down. Okay. And for your body checks, I have one WVF light, three tabs up, two paper handles down. And looking at tethers, see yours going out in a good config, and I also see mine going out in a good config. Okay. Concur. And my half is dry, Stephanie. The easy one. Copy good buddy checks and dry half for EV1. 
I have for EV2. Yeah, if I come Copy. over here, I think you'll be able, we'll be able to keep my tether close enough. Yep, I agree. I think it, I don't think it'll be an issue for translation. I like where you're at. Okay. There's one warning and two cautions. The warning is for a sharp edge on airlock with number eight label, and the two cautions are to avoid contact with deployed test cable, and on P6, avoid contact with deployed and stowed radiators. Lady one copy. Lady two copy. And with that, Christina, you lead the translation out to a P6. And work. And I'm going to head just pretty much right up to the toolboxes, so I think that'll keep me out of your tether. Let me know. Okay, copy. I can see I have a good view of both my tethers right now. So you just heard the buddy checks just outside of the station's airlock. Their uh, tethers are configured the right way. They have uh, all of their sa their safer unit is configured the right way. Their helmets configured the right way, and all the tools necessary. In fact, over to the right, where you see uh, Jessica Mir, the suit with the red stripes, you can see the pistol grip tool. That'll be a key tool for today's procedures. You see Christina Cook already making her way over to the work site. There's something called the translation path. This camera view is an, sort of an upside down view. You can see the earth over to the right from this view. But that translation path is the path where she'll be essentially crawling on the outside of the station uh, to get to the work site, which is on the far port truss uh, of the International Space Station. And EV2 is at the Cedar Rail. Copy, Christina. Jessica, when you're ready, you can follow and translate to uh, P1, mile marker 9180 under the FHRC to check the anchor hooks. Okay, copy, and work. The voice you're hearing from Mission Control Houston is Stephanie Wilson. She is the ground IV. It'll be her voice from Mission Control Houston that you'll be hearing throughout the duration of today's spacewalk, guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through their procedures today. Jessica Meir taking up the rear. Christina Cook already on her way over to the work site. As we begin today's spacewalk, I want to make note of Christina Cook's uh, record duration. She sits on the all-time list of uh, record holders for total duration in space by uh, NASA astronauts. Here's the top list. Peggy Whitson, of course, taking the uh, taking the number one spot at 665 cumulative days. And Christina Cook taking the number eight spot at 311 days of note. This is her first spacewalk. And or her first uh, <laughs> space flight. This is, of course, her sixth spacewalk. But uh, this 311 days was accumulated, accumulated on a single flight, going from expeditions 59, 60, and now 61. Moving on to today's procedures, the bulk of the work will be swapping those batteries out of the port 6 truss. From this view, at sort of the center and then slightly to the left, that's the airlock, that's where they're coming from. They have to move up to the truss and all the way out to the right there on the port 6 side. Those uh, batteries were delivered on the external pallet of uh, HTV-8. That pallet sitting just outside the worksite right now. There it is in position. Only one new lithium-ion battery left on that pallet. The other five have already been installed on the station. As Mir and... Uh, Cook make their way out to the work site. They'll have to install uh, two adapter plates and the new battery and then move around some of the older batteries. Here's a great view of the two astronauts now making their way all the way over to that port six truss. Crossing the Sarge, check your gauntlets in place. I'm going to go ahead and just keep going, Jessica. Okay, copy. And I will take a look at it when I get there. Copy.
Okay, and I am at our anchor hook. It looks like mine is not reeling, so I'm going to check it, but it is in, so unlocked. Can see, Stephanie, that my hook is anchored. My anchor hook is on the Zena Pandora gate okay, close slider lock. I see that Christina's is gate close slider lock. And yes, I can verify there is a twist around the two. But that will be, um, I think, very easy to uh, take apart, just like we did on that first DVA together. And uh, when I bring the hooks in, unless you want me to, to uh, do anything with it now, Stephanie. And Jessica, we copy the report and the checks. We also copy the twist. It is just one twist. We copy and we concur. We can handle it on ingress. You can continue translating to the outboard side of P5. Also checking your gauntlets in place prior to crossing the Sarge. Okay, copy Stephanie, and my gauntlets are in place for EV1. And for EV2, I am to the port seat card about to cross the Sarge. Gauntlets are down. Starting to get some views from the helmet cameras of our spacewalking astronauts. The translucent number on the bottom right of your screen will be the identifier for who is who on today's spacewalk. Number 11 will be Jessica Meir, EV1, for today's spacewalk. She'll be camera number 11, and she'll be wearing the suit with the red stripes. Camera number 18 will be uh, Christina Cook. She'll be wearing the suit with no stripes. Still making their way out to the work site. Jessica Meir has uh, already arrived. Just before the work site is uh, a portable foot restraint, she has to grab and bring with her over to the uh, port six truss. There's a portable foot restraint that's out there that she has to configure as a step one. During your translation on P5. Happy and I'm just happy and I'm just coming to have a frame now. Copy that. Stephanie, I'm about to, cr to cross the Sarge. Gauntlets are still in place. Copy, Jessica. And I am at my green hook location, 5388. Copy, Christina. Jessica, your green hook location is 5311. Stephanie, I'm at the second A-frame, so I'm about to translate over. 
Copy that. Christina, I will pause here. Okay, copy. I will just call. It looks like that fairly sucks, so that's good. Okay, good, and I'll try to get mine around this onion like we talked about. Okay. Okay, for EV2, my green hook is dropped on 5388. Copy 5388 for EV2. Christina, as you continue translating, friendly reminder to route your safety tether, nader and aft of the grapple fixture that's just outboard of your green hook. Those tether configurations are important when translating so far out of the International Space Station's port truss. So they know uh, exactly which handrail and which hook goes where on the way out. This uh, helmet camera view from Jessica Meir. Out of the work site now. Okay, it is Nader and Ash. Copy, thank you. And confirm I'm heading all the way out to the IA. Yes, and uh, you can place your adjustable fare lead on handrail 5360. Christina, my tether is fare led, so it's ended up, it's on the other side of, um, it's just zenith of that trendium, so it should be out of your way. Okay, great. I'm at 5311, Stephanie, working on my green hook. Copy, Jessica. Stephanie, I have my green hook on 5311. Gate is closed. Spider's locked. Copy, Jessica. Continue translating and also write your safety tether nader and aft of the grapple fixture that's just outboard of your green hook. My safety tether fair lead on 5360 is in place. That's for EV2. Copy, Christina. Next, confirm the APFR settings for the APFR that's in WIF 21. Yeah, let's you know when I'm there. Copy. Jessica, for your APFR, We'd like you to adjust the APFR roll to FOX. Copy that. And I do have my safety tether routed underneath that gravel fixture. Copy that as well. Thank you. So the first set of today's procedures are to prepare the work site and get ready for swapping and reconfiguring some of the batteries. Each of our spacewalkers right now are at respective foot restraints.
Jessica Mir is out the foot restraint. That's uh, going to bring uh, our astronauts to a good position to access the external pallet. That's the view you're seeing right now from helmet camera number 11. Helmet camera number 18, Christina Cook. She's at the portable foot restraint next to the stations segment. That's the integrated electronics assembly where the batteries are positioned to store power once routed from one of the solar arrays. They're both going to configure those foot portable foot restraints with the right settings. And I'm verifying. Okay, I actually have hotel, so I'm going to go to Fox. Copy. And I am in Foxtrot now. Copy, Jessica, for you, you see three, Fox, 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 three. Confirm. Copy that. Those are good settings. You can uh, deploy the ingress aid. And for EB2, I can confirm that I have Delta and 12 for the roll and yaw. The wire tie is tucked under the boot plate and the pitch knob is out. From the helmet camera of Jessica Mir, you can see the foot restraint is in a good configuration. It shows she's deploying something called an ingress aid. It's essentially a handle. You can see she flipped it open and pulled out the handle. She'll be able to grab onto that handle and get her foot, her feet, in a good position get it all locked in before she's able to access the external pallet and grab some of the batteries from there. You can see a really good view from the station's camera right there. Into any ORU on the EP, no sudden movements on the EP, maintain less than 0.45 feet per second translation speed, and wait until EP motion dampens out before imparting any loads. EV1 copy. EV2 copies, and I also wanted to report that I just moved my PCB from five. Christine, I believe you said you moved your uh, temperature control valve to five. From five to six. Thank you, from five to six. Yes, Christina, next is uh, to translate to the crew lock bag, basically flip it over and configure it for ops, work on the PGT to configure it with the RET-RET -RET series to the crew lock bag, text, attach the hex driver from the socket caddy. That PGT finally is stowed on the DCS UH-1 scoop with the adjustable. Copy all. I am ready for next steps as well. I have my ingress aid deployed. Copy, Jessica. You have a go to translate onto the EP. Stowing the ORU bag on handrail 7317 to 7316, or per your preference. Copy. So our two astronauts now have their foot restraints all configured in the right uh, settings with the handles out and ready to ingress. That'll be uh, a bulk of the work today. We'll be uh, ingressing and egressing or entering and exiting that foot restraint to access uh, the batteries, get in a good position to reach them and use the pistol grip tool to unbolt them. Now they each have a bag called an ORU bag. That's a, essentially their tool bag for today. So you can see Christina Cook over there in the background. Uh, she's going to stow her ORU bag, her tool bag, in one area. Jessica Meir in the foreground there, she's hooking her bag up to the external pallet. These are all si part of the procedures for the worksite preparation. All their tools in the right places, their foot restraints in the right settings. This is all in preparation for the work to start moving batteries, adapter plates, all to the right positions.
from the helmet camera of Christina Cook. You can see the tool bag that she's working with right now, storing it in a position. You can see the hook off to the left side of her view right there, getting her tools configured. Her tool bag is on the station next to some of the batteries that they're going to have to be grabbing and swapping. Again, she's helmet camera number 18. Helmet camera number 11 is Jessica Meir. She's over on the external pallet. That's where that final new battery is. And that first adapter plate that they have to grab and bring over to the station. She's storing her bag over on the external pallet there. This is still part of the procedures to prepare the work site and begin the swaps. The first swap that will take place will be uh, taking an adapter plate that's currently on the pallet over to the station. We copy Jessica, thank you. Configure the PGT uh, with the hex driver. Stephanie, I have the nine-inch text. It's called on my PDC. It's a good full From helmet camera number 11, this is the view from Jessica Meir. She is preparing her pistol grip tool. This is the space drill. She's got an attachment she needs to outfit it as part of her worksite preparation activities. Next, relocate the scoops from the battery and slot Y to the battery and slot Charlie. Friendly reminder, uh, doghouse is, a, is the 12 o'clock reference. The H1 uh, clocking is 1 o'clock, and H2 is 3 o'clock. You'll hear, hear the term scoop a lot throughout today's spacewalk as well. This is a term for a handling aid. You attach a scoop to a battery or anything you want to grab onto. You see the batteries themselves. These are these big uh, white blocks you see from the helmet camera of Jessica Mir. The handling aids will help to grab them and move, maneuver them a little bit easier. Copy, Christina. And I believe you said H1 of the DCS. That's a firm, each one of the DCSU with the adjustable. And for the scoops, remind me one more time, Stephanie, it's going to be on H2. It will be a clocking of 12 o'clock. Okay. Is that clocking you? Yes. H2, 3 o'clock. H1, 1 o'clock. Okay, copy and work. When you hear the uh, H in front of the numbers, those are the bolts that are associated with each of the battery. Each one has an H1 and an H2. That'll help uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook identify which bolt the uh, scoops or which bolt the uh, pistol grip tool needs to be attached to or used for. In the hands of Jessica Meir right now is a handling aid that's called a scoop, attaching to the bolts of the battery just helps them to uh, grab the battery and maneuver it. Batteries themselves weighing in at just a little under 400 pounds. I have a scoop on H2, and that is at 3 o'clock. Copy, good config.
Something in the TBC attached with an adjustable to the DCSU. Which one? Copy, Christina. Nice work on the IAA setup. I'll take a glove, half, and gauntlet check from you. Copy. 3B2. Gloves are unchanged. No RTV. Seeing yes. Try half. Gauntlets are down. Copy checks on EB2. Christina, you can translate to the EP and uh, meet up with Jessica. Stephanie, I have the other scoop locked on H1 at 1 o'clock. Copy that. Nice work with the EP setup. And I'll also take a glove, half, and gauntlet check from you. Okay. I see no change on my gloves. My hat's dry, and my gauntlets are down. Copy checks. PET is about 53 minutes. We're about on the timeline. Limiting consumables, battery power, 7 hours, 49 minutes. EV1 and EV2, 10 seconds to handover. Copy. I'm Christina, if you want to move outward a little bit, I'm about to come back over. Okay, I see that. Another handover of video communications, handing over the video and audio from TDRS Satellite to TDRS Satellite. They are tracking and data relay satellites. And they provide the video and audio communication from the International Space Station. The handovers for today's spacewalk are scheduled to be pretty sparse, pretty intermittent. This one's a little bit uh, one of the longer ones, but really should be regaining some of that audio shortly. In fact, right now. Copy. And I'm going to just fix my roll and actually that bump to golf. Copy. And it's back at Fox. Copy. Your APF, APF roll is Fox. Getting some of those video communications now. Our two spacewalking astronauts have completed their worksite preparation. The uh, portable foot restraints have the right configuration. Their tools are in the right place with the right settings. Everything is go. So they'll start their first task. On the, adapt on the external pallet, which you see off to the left there, is an adapter plate. The first maneuver will be to grab that adapter plate. Jessica Meir, you can see, entering the portable foot restraint now. She's got a pistol grip tool in hand. She's going to unbolt the adapter plate, hand it off to Christina Cook, and they'll both make their way over to the station to install it on the station side. The battery swap work is officially underway. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. Um, 
this uh, might tend to get caught in the yaw pedal, Christina, because I'm underneath the grapple fixture this time. I see the black okay. semi behind it. So if it does cause a problem, we can keep an eye on it. Then I can just flip mine over and we can put it behind the grapple fixture like we did before. Okay, I copy. The roll pedal with your left foot? Mm hmm That's the roll pedal. Yeah, I see it. Okay. And my right foot, I believe, is in. Curve. And my left foot. Nice work, Jessica. Can I have ingress the PFR, Stephanie? Thank you. Checking in the ingress aid, and I can see that I am definitely close enough to the EP, and I will have good access to brake torque on H2. I will not, from this position, I might be able to reach H1. Um, I can attempt it before we uh, try a maneuver if we don't want to reach the ice. And we copy all, Jessica. Uh, we can also have. Yes, I have a list of uh, three reminders and four new cautions to read to you, and then we can uh, begin work. So reminders about uh, translate only on the handrails, no sudden movements, wait until EP motion dampens out. The four new ones are do not exceed 20 pounds force during ORU soft dock engage disengage. Crew must not simultaneously impart loads into the EP. When SSRMS brakes are off, free float crew member on the EP must remain quiescent. And when braking torque, apply less than 55 pounds force. You want to copy? ABC Robbie. Copy, and with that. Jessica, you'll feel me on your ingress aid. I'm going to translate to the EP. Copy, Christina. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Go ahead. Uh, you read my mind. I was just going to say that, and uh, you can retrieve the ratchet wrench with the hex driver and uh, transfer that to uh, Jessica for braking torque. And Jessica, we copied your report about access to H1 and H2. Christina may have access, and we could also have the arm move as well. Copy off. Christina, I left those tethers really loose. You can see how it works out if we want to tighten them up at all. Okay, copy that. And leave them going for the ratchet wrench for you. Yeah, and Christina. Okay, sounds good. A great view of Jessica Meir and Christina Cook at the work site. You can see from this particular view, Jessica Meir hanging off the station and Christina Cook on the end of the pallet, that external pallet that's containing the new batteries and the adapter plate that they're currently reaching for. Confirm one line flush on H1. Have one line flush on each one. 
Brake torque, max one turn. Copy and work. Is broken on H1. Quarter turn. Copy quarter turn H1. Confirm one line flush on H2. Work. One line flush H2. Brake torque, max one turn. Work. Is broken quarter turn. Copy quarter turn H2. You can swap the ratchet wrench for the PGT with the hex driver with Christina's assistance. And I have the PGT here for you. It is cowed and ready. Okay, pass cow and LED test. You can okay. grab that and I'll send it back. All right, copy. I have the PGT. Copy. PGT settings, Alpha 7, counterclockwise juice. Affirmative. Okay, Alpha 7, clock, counterclockwise two is set. Good settings. Confirm one line flush on H1. With that, uh, Jessica Mir is taking that pistol grip tool, that space drill, and starting to unbolt the adapter blade. Again, there's two bolts, H1 and H2. H1 is currently the one holding in the adapter plate. That black structure right in front of uh, Jessica Mir. Christina Cook uh, just under the frame there, making sure she has the right tools. Stephanie, I have seven turns and I am free spinning. Copy seven turns and free spinning. Next, receive Christina's BRT rat and attach it to the adapter plate handrail tether point. Okay, and Christina, this is the one that the handrail tether point is actually Venus. Okay, so so I think that we might want to do the plan where I ret to the bottom mat, and then we'll just have to do a ret swap. Okay, yep, let's go with that option. Okay, you okay with that, Stephanie? I'm going to ret to the heater mat. I'll be ready to it, and when I remove it, Christina will receive it, and then we'll do a tether swap after she has it on her BRT. This handrail is uh, on the zenith side. I don't, we, her, her tether won't move. And we copy. We like the plan. Christina Cook and Jessica Meir talking through their handoff procedures. Communication will be key throughout these next few steps. You'll hear them say, I have the battery, you have the battery, just as confirmation of who has complete control of the battery. Christina Cook, you can see, making her way from the external pallet back to the station to get in position for that handoff. Copy, same PGT settings for H2, Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2. Confirm one line flush on H2. We have one line flush on H2. Release H2. Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2. Copy, good config. Release H2, about 19 turns to free spin. Okay, Jessica Mir working on that second bolt. H1 is released, now has to release that second bolt, H2. That'll release the adapter plate from the external pallet where it's housed now. Jessica Mir will have to pull it off and then hand it off to Christina Cook, who's waiting on the station end. I'll hand it across. And Stephanie, I have nine turns, and it does appear to be free spinning. I'm going to put a few more turns on it because it was kind of making a, a different 
motion, like a catching motion, a little bit more than the H1 was. Copy and concur. Uh, friendly reminder to assess uh, body positioning to be sure you're on the top of the bolt. Copy, I have good alignment. We are going to give that bolt a few extra turns as the station itself flies 261 statute miles right over Mumbai, India. It's about to head into an orbital nighttime, which you can see off to the corner of your screen there from the helmet camera of Jessica Mir. Okay, Stephanie, I, have, I believe I have good free spinning now. It did catch a little bit, and yes, I can feel that, uh, that it is released. And we copy. Thank you. Contend the uh, PGT back to the ORU bag. Transfer the adapter plate and uh, perform the wet, wet swap as you discussed earlier. Okay, copy. And Christina, take a look where the bag is. Do you want to try to move it forward a little bit so it's out of your way? Actually, I probably can do that now. I think we're probably going to yeah, be okay. I, it may go that way now that the PGT isn't pulling it out because I noticed that was kind yep. of what was giving it up. That okay. I'm going to unlock my rep. Good call, Jessica. My rep is unlocked. Our BR2 jobs, as you can probably see, are pointed up. I see them. I'm going to try to rotate and it. Just watch your ingress aid. And get, I see it, and I'm going to try to get the handrail down to you. Copy. The adapter plate now in the hands of Jessica Mir. Of course, the plate itself secured by a tether. Okay. She'll get into a good position to uh, hand that adapter plate off to Christina Cook, which you can see at the bottom of your screen, ready to receive the adapter plate. She's currently on the station end. Push my jaws straight onto it. As Mir is on the portable foot restraint, right in front of her is the external pallet. And my jaws are locked on it. Both paddles are out. And number one for the rip. Hey, copy. Okay, I have my BRT rep on the handrail tether point. Okay. And I have control, and I'm going to move it. Leave it right here if okay. I can get my rat off. Copy. Okay, I have my rep. Copy. Do you have control? Copy, I have control, and I'm going to bring it. Start the needle here. Happy, you've got it. Jessica Mir handing that adapter plate off. With the adapter plate positioning, you can translate to the IEA APFR. Jessica, for you, will work to secure the tools for the upcoming arm maneuver. Okay, copy. That will just be the adjustable on um, the PCC and then the ratchet wrench in the bag, correct? That's a firm. And I did already stir the ratchet for you. Thank you.
Stephanie, I have a, an adjustable down on the PGT, and then the bag is all packed up other than that. Copy. And Jessica, if you feel they okay, are... I am at my ATFR. Copy, Christina. Prior to Increst, check the gap spanner clear and verify your reach to the PGT with the hex driver, and then you can ingress. For Jessica, if you feel the bag and the tools are secure, uh, basically will not float around during the arm maneuver, we are happy with that setup. And then you can prepare for EP translation, translating off of the EP onto the APFR, checking the ingress aid stowed towards the boot plate and all tethers clear. Copy. I did tighten up the bag a little bit more adjustable and the PGT is, uh, is tethered, so I think we are in a good config there. I Copy, thanks for the report. Jessica Meir completed the handoff so to Christina Cook. Seconds and 30 seconds to a 20 second handover. As the sun begins to set, the station itself, 261 statute miles over uh, central China. Jessica Meir has her tools in a good configuration over on the external pallet side of things. Now she'll get out of the foot restraint to go help Christina Cook with the installation of that adapter plate that they just pulled from the external pallet onto the station. In the meantime, Cook uh, close to the portable foot restraint at the station end of things. Her next procedures will be to uh, now that the adapter plate is in tow, to get inside of the foot restraint. That'll put her into a good position where she'll be able to reach uh, slot four. That's the specific slot where the adapter plate will be. Next to slot four is a lithium ion battery that's been installed on the last spacewalk. Ingress aid is stowed. Okay, okay, copy that. And I have put the ingress aid back practically flush with the boot plate, so I should be in a good config here, so I believe it has me heading over to you. Copy and concur, and I'm going to do an inspection here. I'm going to stand right over there in our um, new shepherding way, just to feel it out before we have anything. Copy. See what it'll be like. Did the same, and I think for me, the two interferences that were new were helmet to the third radiator and being aware of the grapple fixture. Copy. Jessica, Christina, we're back with you. Jessica, when you are five feet clear of the EP, give the arm a go to maneuver to the EP Charlie position. Okay, copy. I will let you know. I'm, get, I'm moving away from it now. Copy. And Christina, we copy you are preparing for uh, inspection. That's affirmative, and I have inspected the IEA side. I see no fog, no bent pins, good EMI bands with my helmet light on the IEA side, and I see good cold plate as well. Copy IEA inspections and how handy it is to have a helmet light for that. Okay, and Luca, I am clear of the arm, so you have a go to maneuver. And Luca copies. And Stephanie, I am over at the IEA, so where is my first location? Am I going straight over to the radiator side? Jessica, for you, the first activity is to uh, relocate the scoops, the scoops from the battery in slot three to the battery in slot six. Okay, copy and work. And I can confirm that I have a 
just inspected the AP side of the connector. No five, no bent pin. Pins a nice good EMI band. Let's see a look on one. Go ahead, Luca. One question about your tethers, just making sure that they're also clear of the site. The tethers should be clear of the site. I copy. Christina, with the inspection of both the IEA and the AP side, verify adapter plate blind make connectors or oriented ISS outboard. Okay, there are, and I actually have a new slack up. Copy that, then lock out your RET with slack. And the RET is locked out. I have PGT settings for the PGT with the hex driver when you're ready. And I'm ready for setting. Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Copy Alpha 7, clockwise 2 and work. Stephanie, I have, there's only one group on battery three. It was on, oh, wait a minute. Okay, actually, uh, correction on that one, I, it's in work. Copy. Christina Cook working with that uh, pistol grip tool. She's inside of a portable foot restraint. Seven. Counters clockwise to set. Had a good cow. Copy good cow and uh, just confirm clockwise to. Thank you. Clockwise to. Copy Alpha 7 clockwise 2 are good settings. Confirm one line flush on H2. One line flush on H2. Drive H2 16 to 17 turns to hard stop. Copy. So Cook has that uh, adapter plate in its position. Now going to work with that space drill to uh, work with those two bolts to secure the adapter plate into place on the station. That adapter plate is adjacent to one of the new lithium-ion batteries that was installed on a previous spacewalk this past Wednesday. The adapter plate will uh, be the final step for making sure that the configuration of this lithium-ion battery works with the station's power grid, routing power that's collected from the solar arrays downstream to the many experiments on board the station. Turns a green LED, and I see 5.5 foot pounds of torque. Let's see what happened there. So, okay, I did check it was Alpha 7, but I see that it did get bumped to Bravo 7 somehow. So, let me know how you'd like me to see. Copy, checking. Over to the helmet camera of Jessica Mir as Cook continues to drive the bolt, securing the adapter plate into place. Her work is taking some of those handling aids, those scoops, that silver structure you see in the center of Mir's view. And she has to move those handling aids, those scoops, from the batteries that they currently are over to the battery that they'll handle next, and that's an old nickel hydrogen battery, currently in the spot where a uh, lithium ion battery will take its place. So they need to move that old battery over on top of the adapter plate that Cook is currently installing. We'd like you to go one turn counterclockwise, and then reset Alpha 7 clockwise, too. Copy. 
So I am in Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, and you'd like me to put one turn. That's a firm. That's a good config. Copy. I'm now getting one line flush, and I'll let you know when I have that. Copy. I have one line flush. Starting turn. There's one turn in Bravo 7. Counter. Complete. Copy. Reset now. Alpha 7. Clockwise 2. Alpha 7, clockwise 2 is set. Copy. Drive that until it torques out. I'm right above you here getting the scoop. Copy. Out of your way. Okay, copy that. And I have one line flush driving. And we drove one turn. I have a green LED, 9.6 foot pounds of torque. That sounds better. Copy green light, one additional turn, 9.6 torque. Good read that. And Christina, for your initial driving at Bravo 7, what was the turn count? I had about 20 turns. Copy about 20 turns, thank you. I now have Alpha 7, clockwise 2 set, and if you agree, I'll go ahead and get one line plus two lines visible on H1. I concur. Two lines visible, one line flush on H1. Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Yeah. Okay, and I can confirm I have that config. Copy. Drive H1, four and a half to five and a half turns. Okay, I have five and a half turns, 9.2 per pound of torque, and a green LED. Copy five and a half turns, green light. 9.2 on the torque. Stephanie, I am at battery 6. Could you give me a clocking for these scoops, please? Yes, battery 6, H1, 4 o'clock. H2, 6 o'clock. This is the helmet camera of Jessica Meir. She's moving some of those handling aids over to the battery that they'll be working with next. In the meantime, Christina Cook uh, finished driving that last bolt of the adapter plate, now secured to the station. Copy that. When Jessica joins you, she can stow it uh, to the crew lock bag. You can unlock and release your RET and egress APFR. Next is the adapter plate work. Stephanie, just double check me on the clocking. We said six and four, but that is actually relative to Christina in this position, not relative to H2, correct? That's correct. Uh, 12 o'clock is uh, the deployed radiator uh, marking. Stephanie, I am able to breach the TA clamps from the APFR. I have released the three TA clamps. Copy, Christina. Next, demate the adapter plate connector. Okay, and I also have a good option for that in the APFR, so I'll do that while I'm still ingressed. 
Copy. Okay, and that is Zenata from the Dummy Connector, and I see no FOD, good socket, and a good EMI band on the connector. Copy the checks. And I'm egressing. Copy, and uh, we can have you also ret to and remove the cap from the battery in slot number three just above. Copy. Stephanie, both of those scoops are in place on battery six. Copy, Jessica. Please uh, join Christina uh, near the adapter plate. Jessica to catch you up. Um, so far, I have demated the connector, and I have not demated the cap or connected the connector back to the cap or back to the connector on the lithium ion battery. Okay. I'll be visiting it. Happy. Jessica, Christina, if you like, uh, Jessica can uh, ret to and remove the cap from the battery in slot three, just above the adapter plate. And then, Christina, you can transfer the adapter plate cable to Jessica for the mating. And when mating, if you need, uh, put in one twist to keep it clear of the adapter plate interface, and also uh, clear the uh, gap spanner inboard uh, during the mating. Yeah. Hey, Jessica, so I think you're coming into position here at the cap. Oh, any said, feel free to rent to that. I am. That is in work. I've got a red on it. Okay, and then to remove that and then install it on the adapter plate, I can get this connected. It's a great suit location for getting down to that J4 on the adapter plate for you. Copy. Want me to pass it to you? Um, if, if you want to attach that on the adapter plate over there and then I can attach this connector, or we okay. can switch roles either way, just since you have it on your right. So it's on the other side. That's affirmative, and it's right next to that tube just on H1 of the DCSU, so okay, I think I it'll it. be a good install. See, I see it. Okay, and on J4, on the lithium ion battery, Stephanie, I have no five, no bent pins. Copy. Mate the cable to the battery.
Okay, I have Bay 4 connected to P4. It is mated over center. Copy. In one report, Stephanie, on this cap, I just noticed uh, that it's about to plug it in. There are two O-rings on the cap. The bottom one, so the most external one, is actually cut, so it's still in place. On the in the ring, but it is uh, broken, so part of the edges on each end are extending outward. And it probably will interfere with it going in smoothly. Copy checking. And Jessica, thanks for the report. This is a dummy uh, connector at this point. Do your best to install it. And So Stephanie, I'm able to get it down, um, and now I see one of the cut ends is actually cut in caught in between the connector and the cap end, so that's preventing me from rotating the cap to actually lock it in place. So I think it actually seems like it would probably stay in place as it is, but in order to get a good full lock, I think I'll have to remove that broken O-ring. Jessica, thanks for the effort and the report. We'd like you to place the cap with both O-rings in the crew lock bag. Okay, copy. And Jessica, we think there should be a free uh, integral ret uh, in the crew lock bag to receive that. Okay, and upon removing it, most of the O-ring, the broken one is still on the cap, but there is some of it that's remaining inside the connector. Just a little piece I can see there, so I don't think that I can really cap capture it. It's just a tiny piece of O-ring. Copy, Jessica, we appreciate the report. Uh, that little piece of O-ring is fine to stay there. These O-rings seem extremely brittle. Copy, Jessica. Christina, I will take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. And I can do that while you're working, Jessica. Get that in the bag for EV2. No change on the glove. I have a dry hap and my gauntlet to go. Copy checks EV2, thank you. And uh, Stephanie, you said that there should be a spare integral ret? That's a firm. Copy, Christina, you don't happen to know which side of the bag that's on, do you? Okay. Stephanie, for me, feel free to Put me up with any next steps. Yes, there is one caution. Do not impart loads into microsquares when the torque is broken on the associated bolt. Christina, check the gap spanner clear for the battery install onto the adapter plate in this slot four. And roll your APFR to hotel. And um, Stephanie, you broke, you broke up a little bit in the beginning there. I heard something about torque, but 
I believe that was a step that we're going to be ensuring later, or was that a step for me to break torque? The battery's good. Uh, that was a caution. Here, I'll read it again. It's a caution that applies at the IEA. Do not impart loads into microsquares once torque is broken on the associated bolt. So Christina Cook now making her way to that next battery after the adapter plate has been successfully, successfully s installed onto the station. The cable routing the power from the lithium ion battery to the adapter plate is installed. And Jessica Muir currently cleaning up uh, those last set of procedures, putting the caps from those uh, cables into her uh, storage bag. You can see the view from Christina Cook's, or uh, Jessica Muir's helmet camera here. Christina Cook, in the meantime, on her way to that next procedure. That next one is over at the old uh, nickel hydrogen battery. That was the one Jessica Meir, just a little bit earlier, was installing some handling aids on the uh, two bolts that are securing the nickel hydrogen battery to the station. They're going to unbolt uh, that old nickel hydrogen battery and put it on top of the adopt adapter plate that they just installed and connected to the adjacent lithium ion battery. Stephanie, the cap is on the integral rat in the crew lock bag. Copy, thank you. And while you're at the crew lock bag, and I believe I can see it in WVS, there's a check for the PGT with the hex driver to be stowed at the crew lock bag and clear of the battery in slot six for that operation. Copy. And Stephanie, for me to adhere to that caution, I want to verify that torque has not been broken on battery six. Uh, and that's a firm. You're getting ready to do that next, so that caution is uh, just in advance of uh, breaking that torque. Ingress, and my ingress is stowed. Copy. And Jessica, also while you're working with the crew lock bag, we'll need the uh, ratchet wrench with the six inch socket for breaking torque on battery six. See you know, I'm holding it out to your right hand. Got it. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Awesome. Christina, uh, read the serial number on the battery. Battery is serial number 0098. Copy 0098. Jessica, if you can reach the uh, battery tether point, attach a rat to the battery tether point or pass it to Christina to place it and I lock out the rat with slack. Okay, I'm just going to move position. Okay, there you go. Got it. Okay. And if you wouldn't mind having a little more trip the radiator, I can lean back down and yep. Okay, perfect. All right, Jessica's red is on it on the battery battery stick. I believe she wanna walk that out, so I see plenty of room here. Okay. So it's not yet locked out. So I'll do that. 
And Stephanie, I haven't yet broken torch. Broken torch. Is that something I can do while just to get in a good position? It's locked out. Okay, copy. Thank you. Yes, that's a firm. And also, once Jessica's in a good position, I'll need a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from her. Okay, I'm in a good position for that check now. You'll hear uh, glove, hap, and gauntlet checks throughout today's spacewalk. These are regular stop points to make sure that their helmet absorption pad is dry, that their gloves don't have any scuff marks on it. I have a small flap of um, RTV. It's actually not even a flap yet. It's just a little crack about midway up the index finger. Everything underneath it looks in good condition. My half is dry. No change to the right glove. Copy, and your gauntlets? Gauntlets are down. Copy, good checks for EV1, PET, one hour, 42 minutes. Copy. I copy as well, and I have the ratchet wrench installed on H1 as battery six, line flush. Copy, one line flush on H1, Brake torque less than one turn. Okay, and that was tape line flush and braking torque. It's broken, quarter turn. Copy quarter turn on H1. Confirm tape line flush on H2. Tape line flush on H2. Christina Cook successfully breaking the torque of that first bolt, now working the second. Quarter turn on H2. Copy quarter turn on H2. You can hand back the ratchet wrench for Jessica to stow in the crew lock bag and swap for the PGT with the six inch socket. And the ratchet is back of the crew lock bag. I will get you the PGT at your P. Now that the torque is broken for the two bolts securing the nickel hydrogen battery to the station, Jessica Mir will hand off that pistol grip tool, that space drill, off to Christina Cook. You can see now she'll use that space drill to uh, unbolt the old battery from the station. Its new home will be on top of the adapter plate that the duo just installed. Copy. Copy. While the cows in work, uh, added items for the report. You are 15 minutes ahead, limiting consum consumable 7 hours 30 minutes, EV2 Medox. And we have a good cow, good battery test, and LED test. Copy. PGT settings, Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2. Alpha 7, counter 2 is set. It's definitely Alpha. Confirm tape line flush on H1. Okay, I have tape line flush on H1. Release H1, about eight turns. It works. I see good alignment. See, thank you. Okay, that was seven turns. Started skipping at five. And the status indicator is in unlock. Yeah. Copy seven turns, skipping at five, status indicator unlock. Same settings for H2, alpha seven, counter clockwise two. Okay, that is best. And I am tape line flush on H2. Copy, drive H2, about 19 turns. And Jessica's that alignment look okay? Come to your left a little bit. Perfect. Okay. See Jackie?
nice even jacking. Okay. Now it's 18 turns and it started skipping. Copy 18 turns for skipping. Check status indicator unlock. Unlock. Copy, you can transfer the PGT to Jessica for stowage on the swing arm. Unlock the RET. Jessica, you can uh, reposition to receive the battery and then work together to remove the battery. Copy. My PGT is stowed, and let me unlock this rex, you know? Copy. Okay, and let me think about where we need me right now. So, take a look. Okay, so I'm going to move a bit more outboard, oh perfect, and we are installing it in the same orientation with H2 outboard. So one thought is I could hand you H1 and then I'll roll and then you hand me back H2. Okay, copy. And we do, so right now, you know, we're, you can see where the crew box is, yeah. PGTR. Um, just have to guide it around that, and then I'll be able to clear them. To make sure they're, clear. they're clear now, but you know, of course they're kind of in between the two right now. Yep, concur. I, I see that, and I agree. I think we'll be able to clear that once we're there. Okay. That nickel hydrogen battery unbolted from the station. Now Jessica Mir and Christina Cook talking their way through the next move to uh, move it to its new position on top of the adapter plate as the sun begins to rise. The International Space Station 259 statute miles over the South Pacific Ocean entering into an orbital daytime. Uh, uh, maintain the battery orientation with H2 outboard. We mark H2 outboard. I feel like the RET is pulling, you know, we got the... No, it, it's not, there's still spots. Okay. Maybe, it may be at the end, but so far so good. I'm not feeling any, um, action on it. And I have removed it from soft stuff, but it's still just over the tension slightly, so it's got a little play, and that was intentional. Okay, copy. I'm going to get a BRT down here. Okay, copy. That was a little pull, so that's, that's the extent of it. Okay. It's a pull again. You may want to come a little inboard to give us a little leeway when we pull it out. Okay, I will. Okay. I'm just going to secure the CRT here. Okay, I think that I am in a good position now. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the soft coat. All right. coming and it's clear. Copy. And if you would mind moving your safety cover, just kind of push it down towards your leg. Great. Here comes the nickel hydrogen battery, now in control of Christina Cook, handing off to Jessica Mir. There we go. All right, great. And then, you know, I don't think this handoff is going to be too difficult because we don't have to flip it, so I think we've got plenty of options here. You could take that side and then just hand me H1 once I'm over or I could do this now. I think maybe where you are, if you were grabbing for H2, that might be the most natural. You think you can swing it up and over to me once I'm over um, battery floor location? 
I have it in this in this organization. Okay. Right now. I mean, I can. Uh, now, what about the fins? Are they? Uh, do you think you'll be able to keep them off, or should we flip it upside down? I think we're going to need to flip that. Okay, let me flip that then for you. Ready? Yep. You have control? I have control. Okay, I'm going to let go. Now, stand by. Yeah. See my tether? Yep, I can go. If we need to, I can go fairly to out to my right. You can get it up and over. Right, would you be able to grab that scoop now and send it away? Yes, I've got control of the battery. Okay, you have a battery. I have the battery. Okay, I'm going to now go back, get my body back down towards the structure since I lean back. Here it Okay. I've got good control. All right. And, and just don't move any more up. Like head up to the okay. battery just above you. Happy. And Stephanie, if uh, you agree, I'll go ahead and roll my APFR to Delta. Copy, we concur. And I'm pulling the battery in toward me a little bit, Christina, so now it's on your right. Okay, I should be more out of your way. Communication is key for battery handoffs. You hear uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook uh, communicating who has control of the battery. That's uh, critical to make sure that it's not inadvertently lost. However, the battery use itself, you see, is secured by a tether as well, making sure that uh, not only is it in control of at least an astronaut, but also secured to the station at all times. Now that it's removed and in control of Jessica Meir, Christina Cook making her way over to its new location. She'll have to uh, enter the new portable foot restraint to get her in a good position to push the battery in on top of the adapter plate. You can see the adapter plate here right now. This is the one they just installed. She'll have to enter that foot restraint and uh, that are put her into a good position where you can see those two pegs off to the sides of the adapter plate. Those will be the guides for her to push it in. And then from there, she'll drive the bolts to secure it to the station. Okay. And you see the PTT right now? Yes, I okay. do. Right, and then I can see the cable. We'll also keep an eye on the cable. It does look pretty well clear, but you may need to bump it to the side a little okay. bit here. Another handover in communications. A temporary uh, gap in video and audio. We should be regaining audio communications, space to grounds from our two spacewalking astronauts, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook, here shortly, as well as some views. Okay, now stand by because my yeah. ret is now underneath. Yeah, it. I see that, and I think as soon as I face the fins down, it will come around. Um, here, let me, I can be consistent I right now. I don't think so, so. Okay. Yeah, it's under, okay, okay now, now it will come around. Okay, yep, I'm going to turn around. You're getting a live look at the International Space Station flight control room. The team's here guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through the procedures now. I understand the uh, APFR. Christina, do uh, you have it in the uh, Delta position, and uh, you show the uh, area clear, the ingress aid is stowed. Gap spanner and cable, we heard you talking about that clear of uh, the slot. And that's affirmative. Okay, right. so, and Christina, can you lift the box away from the IEA? Yes. No? Okay, and so now my rat is still underneath that. It. it went back underneath. Okay. So we need to either come around one of the corners. Right, keep lifting yes, the fins, lift the fins up, lift the fins up. Just bringing it down on me right now. Stand by. So, I wonder if we're going to have to do a ret swap here. Okay. So I think this ret is really going to be in our way. That's a great call. Let me do that. Um, okay. I'm just going to try to stay clear because I'm getting really close to the fins. I'm leaning back. 
back even further. I think this will really help us. Okay, I'm going to zoom you right back to you. I'm ready to. Okay, it. you can go ahead. Mir and Cook talking their way through the configuration to make sure their tethers are in a good position. Talking their way that maybe a different tether configuration will work for this particular move. I see it. I have it. All right. I'm still lean back to keep clear, so I'll just wait on your calls when I can begin installation. Okay. Okay, I am in a good position now to, to see. Okay. So, Christina, you can, you're going to have to bring the box down towards your feet. And now you see the PG. Are you good? You're, you're clear of the PGT. And then the cable. Yep, I'm going to have to move over there to see that. One sec, I will transit over there. Okay, I think I can pull the cable clear, okay? Okay. That's still, still in the way there. Hold on, I'm gonna have to go down there, okay? I like your location, Jessica, because I'll probably need a hand self dressing H two as well. Okay, copy. For your awareness, um, your safety tether is now kind of across the battery. I'm still on the top of it though, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, I think I think we're gonna be good. And then that, what you feel on your right is the battery. Yeah, I feel it. Okay. I am holding the cable clear now, and I have good visuals. Okay. So um, if you can bring the, bring the battery down with your feet. Okay. okay. Now start coming down toward the adapter plate. Copy. I see my tethers clear. Okay, copy that. And I can help you guide H2. Okay. In good alignment with Mark along the okay, radiator stand by. side. Yep. Stand by. Now we need to bring the, the lower part, so mm -hmm. part towards your feet, Yep. down more. Okay. Toward my feet more, you mean? Um, so, no. The part, in? Yeah. It in? needs to come in more. From the helmet camera of Mir, you can see her pulling back one of the cables. She's got a great view of one of the bolts that helped to guide the uh, battery in. She's uh, communicating with Christina Cook, who's got a better handle of the battery itself and in the portable foot restraint, making sure those uh, bolts and guides are aligned so they can push it right into the adapter plate. Can I try coming down? Okay. One by one, we control the battery real quick. I'm going to put the tether that might be interfering slightly. Okay, I have okay. it. Okay, and I have it back. So. Okay. Good alignment on alignment guide. Okay, I think we're in line now. If you push down. Okay, I'm pushing down. And then 
And this may be it. Remember, it, it is a I lot agree. taller. I agree. Okay. We are in flat dot. Copy. Yes. And then um, this is probably where that fair lead did come in handy, but I think it's fine. Yep. I can go put it in now, though, if you don't need if you don't need me right here. I think I just need your PVC. Okay. All right, Stephanie, we have battery six soft dots and flat four. Copy that. Nice work. And I'll have PGTs when you're set when you're ready. Actually, see if I can do this, or if maybe having you there would be a good. Do this from here. Okay, Stephanie, I'm ready for PGT setting. Alpha seven, clockwise two. Alpha seven, clockwise two is set. Confirm tape line flush on H two. Line is flush. Drive eight. Back to the line up there. Copy. Drive H2, 16 to 17 turns. Work. All right, we're going to need down more pressure. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica, I'll take your down more pressure on the PVC. Okay. Mir and Cook successfully pushing that battery into place, now driving the bolts to secure it to the station. The first of two bolts that will help secure it in that place. I have to tell you, I'm not sure how that happened, but the switch went to Bravo again, and I just checked it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna incorporate a check more frequently now. Um, so what happened was, it was on Bravo Seven, but I got a low torque, so I didn't drive it all the way to the Bravo Seven torque, but it is likely above the Alpha Seven torque. So. I'll stand by for steps. Not sure what's happening there. It's, I've been checking it. I have to implement better checks. And we copy Christina. Can you tell us uh, the, the turn count that you just did? That's 17 turns. Copy 17. I do see the status indicator is unlocked. And we copy the status indicator, same as before. We'd like one turned counterclockwise at Bravo 7. I have Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2 set. I'm going to put one turn on H2. Let's confirm case line flush. Good config. Flush. And Christina, come to your right a little. There you go. I have Bravo 7 counter 2 set again. They're powered off. I'm going to put one turn in and I have tape line flush. You get a line back. One turn, Bravo 7. And we copy. Now reset Alpha 7 clockwise 2. I see Alpha 7. Clockwise two. Drive H two to torque. I have tape line flush. Having a torque. The number of turns and the torque using the pistol grip tool are measured very precisely. Green light it was one turn, nine point one foot pounds of torque. 
Copy green light, one turn, 9.1 .1 on the torque, and you previously reported you saw the status indicator lock. All on H2, thank you. Same settings for H1, Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Confirm one. Okay, and I'm looking at Alpha. I have Alpha 7, clockwise 2. And we like it, Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Confirm tape line flush on H1. Push. Drive H1 four to five and a half turns. That first bolt uh, H2 secured to the precise measurement uh, with the right number of turns. She's moved moved on to the next uh, bolt with four and a half turns. Copy four and a half turns. Green light 9.2 on the torque. Check status indicator lock. Status indicator is locked. Copy that. Nice work on battery six. You can transfer the PGT to Jessica for stowage on her swing arm and unlock and release your RET. My Copy, Christina. Your next steps are to retrieve the scoops from the battery in this slot, egress the APFR, and those scoops will be reinstalled on battery 5. Yeah, I copy. Good. Yep. Okay. Christina, your next uh, steps are at the uh, EP. I'm sorry for Jessica. Next steps at the EP. Okay, so I will translate back to the EP now. That's affirmative, and once you arrive, you have a go to ingress the APFR. SSRMS brakes are on. Okay, copy. With that, the uh, old nickel hydrogen battery has been successfully installed on top of the adapter plate secured with both bolts and now in its new home. That frees up an empty slot on the station. So they'll move on to the next task. In fact, uh, Christina Cook already on her way to the external pallet. They're gonna grab that last lithium ion battery that's currently on the external pallet and bring it over to the station and put it into that new slot that has just been freed up by moving that old nickel hydrogen battery. Jessica Mir still at the work site doing some last cleanup things. Christina Cook already on her way to the external pallet to grab that last battery. What do you think about that translation task, Jessica? Brad? I liked it. Okay. So, but I'm fine to do either way. So I, I, I think we should try it. Okay. And this is a grapple fixture. We just have to be sure to keep our legs straight up, you know, some to avoid that. Okay. Okay.
Stephanie, are these kids going on to Battery 5 at 6 o'clock? Battery 5, H2 is 6 o'clock, H1 is 4 o'clock. And Stephanie, I am in the APFR. Copy, check Ingress Aid Stowed and Tethers Clear, and tell us the serial number. Ingress Aid is stowed, Tethers Clear, and I see I am in front of serial number 0023. Copy 0023. Attach a RET to the H1 scoop, locking it out with slack. You're looking at the helmet camera of Jessica Meir, currently inside of the foot restraint, looking right at that new battery that they need to pull from the external pallet. Those handling aids, those scoops are in position. She's going to attach a tether to the new battery, make sure it's secured, secured to her at all times. Her next steps will be to take the pistol grip tool and start un unbolting it from the external pallet. In the meantime, uh, Christina Cook is over on the station side. She's thinking two steps ahead at this point, m moving some of those scoops, those handling aids that they just used to move the old battery to the slot on top of the adapter plate. She's moving those scoops up to the new battery that they'll start moving once they install this new battery that Jessica Meir is looking at right now on top of its uh, new home on the empty slot of the station. Okay, Stephanie, before I take those settings, I'm going to assess my reach. Actually, we only have to release H2 on this one, correct? That's affirmative, Jessica. Then I am in a good position. I'm ready for settings. PGT settings, Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2. Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2 is set. Good settings, confirm tape line flush on H2. Christina, check WVS. We have tape line flush on H2. Release H2 about 19 turns. Work. And Stephanie, I have those scoops installed. I believe I'm heading back to APFR or the EP. Christina, you can roll your APFR to hotel and then meet to Jessica, near the EP. Happy. And Stephanie, I have 24 turns. I didn't really feel the uh, skipping, but it does feel like it is released. Copy 24 turns. Check status indicator unlock. Status indicator is unlocked. Copy. And it is definitely raised. Copy that. So your PGT and unlock the rest. And work. Only one bolt securing the new lithium ion battery to the external pallet. That work is complete. Now uh, Jessica Meir has handle of that new battery. In the meantime, uh, Christina Cook completed moving those handling aids to the battery that they'll use once they install this new battery. That's an old battery that they need to move again over to the external pallet. Cook standing by, waiting to, for the handoff from Jessica Mir of that new battery.
here for us? Okay, and I think, Christina, you're going to actually want to move a little bit more further outward. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I think we're in a good position if you concur. I agree. I'll be able to swing it down to my left and hand you H2. Okay. Start that swing and then we'll evaluate reach. Okay, let's see. Yeah, do not roll. Okay, it has control of the battery. Okay, you have the battery. I'm letting go. Okay. And then we know in terms of swing, I believe I'm spins out from structure right now. You are spins out, and then just don't move it any more zenith, because if you do, you'll be getting close to that handrail. Copy. Right now, you're in a good position, okay, and I'll ease it in towards me. Okay, yeah, I think I will be able to still eat egress um, and have enough room. So okay. I'll, yep, it looks like you will, but I agree you'll kind of have to come off from back of the ATFR. And we're ready for me to egress, Stephanie? That's affirmed. Stephanie, do I need to sew the ingress rate at this time, or can I leave it here? Jessica, you can leave it there. Copy. So I think, Christina, before I can get down to that handrail, mm -hmm. I can hold it here. Actually, maybe I can get down there if we can move it out a little bit more. Put that. Looking better, that's okay. okay. If not, I agree, we can do the minis pass off. Problem. Here, that's a hand on APFR. New battery in tow, Christina Cook and Jessica Meir will uh, communicate and work their way to move the new lithium-ion battery to its new home on the International Space Station. This is the last lithium-ion battery to be installed on the Port 6 truss. Switch hands, so and get it in my left hand and okay, get my right hand down here, but right now I'm not going to be able to grab it that way. If you want to do a, a mini hold right there, I can reposition one handrail down and then we can scooch it towards me. And yep. yep, let's do that. Okay. I've got control. Okay, you have the battery. I have the battery. Okay, and now you can put it out towards me and I will get the hand. Perfect, I have the battery. Okay, you have the battery. Scooch it in. Yep. Come in my way. Okay, 
and I am still read it to it. Do we want to give me read it to it? You can do the rep swap, I think, any time at this point. Okay. And we concur. Maybe the next time you have control, I can write to it. Okay, copy. Thank you. Christina, can you bring it inboard a little bit, outboard a little bit more? Outboard, yep. Your awareness in, in um, positioning, your feet will need to go towards um, Zenith to avoid the grapple fixture within yep. a handrail or two. Yep, I see that. Okay. The only thing that's difficult here is the clocking of this uh, scoop. As you can see. Yeah, I do see that. I have a... Okay, I have control of the battery. Okay, you have the battery. I'll go ahead and rip to it. Okay. Okay. My red is on it, and do you want me to go ahead and just take control now, and or go ahead and shimmy? You can take control. Okay, not, not okay perfect. I have control of the battery. Okay, you have control. Okay, I have my rep. Happy. And now I have control of the battery. Happy. I have control of the battery. I have the battery. Full slime below us. I see that. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I have the battery. Okay, you have the battery. It looks like Africa. Yeah. Christina, if you can go further. I can, but we'll need to do one quick swap if you can grab it, and then I'll jump uh, the handrail with my left hand. Right now I am maxed out okay. board on this handrail. So it's right at the grapple fixture? I know, I see that. Yeah, okay, okay. let me get, I'll just go one handrail down, and then be able to pass it back, pass them on the next one. Copy. Okay, I have the battery. Do you have the battery? I have the battery. Okay, are you able to push it towards me at all? Actually, I no, I think uh I see if each other is caught on the handrail adjacent. Okay. Anywhere, so I'm going to have to turn around to do no that. Problem. I'll get the, I'll get control. Okay. And I am a little bit more outboard, so okay. we, we did make progress. I have the battery. You have the battery. Just my safety tethers under the APSR. Copy. Okay, that is free now. Good catch. Okay, now I can slide down. Okay, I have the battery. Do you have the battery? Do you have the battery? Do you have the battery? 
Okay, and if you can cinch it in to yep. as far as you can, okay. then I'll cross the, the grapple fixture now. Copy. All right, I have it all cinched in. Free clearance. Okay, I'm past the grapple fixture. See my full use. <laughs> I've seen it in a while. Okay, I have the battery. You have the battery. I'm almost to the ATFR, so we may get away with. Through a lot of communication, Mir and Cook made their way to the work site. Mir currently has control of the battery. You can see from her helmet camera, number 11, using the handling aid, the scoop, to hold the new lithium ion battery. In the meantime, Cook will uh, begin positioning herself to ingress or enter the portable foot restraint. That portable foot restraint is positioned now to uh, put her in a good position for installing the new battery and driving the bolts using the pistol grip tool, the space drill. Probably going to be a good spot right there because I'm at my APFR. Great. Obviously, the install location. Okay. So, thinking about what orientation I want to be in right now, this is going right here. Um, it is going in position six, correct? Yep, and H2 is outboard, which it is in that slot, so we're good there. Okay, and Stephanie, I have a great view right now of the IEA, and I see good fins, I see no FOD, and big pins, and a good EMI band. Copy, Jessica, good inspection of the IEA. Yeah, I think if I move further this way. Yep, and I'll swing this H1 up to you. I'll get in, and then I'll take back H2. This is my extension if you want to gauge how far you can or not be. There we go, yep. I have the battery. You have the battery. I have the battery. And I'm going to, if you concur, I'm going to go ahead and ingress. And I'm going to move more fast to get out of your way with the battery. Copy, Christina. You can ingress. Just watch the rat. Yep, it's this next Yep, do not. Thank you. Okay. Should be clear of you with the battery. Okay. Twenty seconds to a twenty second handover. Another handover of video and audio communications from the station should be regaining both shortly. Of course, uh, audio a little bit beforehand. In the meantime, you're looking at the International Space Station Flight Control Room. It's the teams here that are looking over all the systems and the crew aboard the International Space Station, as well as guiding our two spacewalking astronauts, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook, through the procedures today. Um, you're there too. Yeah, that's expressive. I just noticed. 
I think those need to be over here. Mir and Cook still in the process of getting the new lithium ion battery. That is the third for this integrated electronics assembly on the port six truss. There are five lithium ion batteries currently installed on the port six truss. This is the sixth and final. But the work won't be uh, done quite yet. Still need an adapter plate and to move an old lithium or nickel hydrogen battery to uh, integrate the lithium ion battery with this electronics assembly. That work coming shortly. In the meantime, Mir and Cook now with uh, the visuals back from the International Space Station. Cook ingressing that portable foot restraint that puts her in a good position to drive the bolts and secure the lithium ion battery to its new home. The battery itself still in possession of Jessica Mir. Are you still in the comfortable spot? I am. And that's H2, so you want to have that in your right hand. Copy. Also, check uh, tether's clear and that the gap scanner's clear. The gap scanner is clear and tethers are clear. Okay, I have the battery. Oh, you have the battery. Enable. Give you a little push this way. Perfect. Excellent. Next will be the bottom okay. of the battery yes. inspection Go by ahead. Jessica. Okay, stand by. Okay, I see good fins. I see no fog, good EMI band. Pins. Okay, good inspection. Copy, we concur. Go in, good inspection. So the only thing that you're going to have to watch, I think, is your ingress. Okay, I think the only thing you're going to have to watch is your ingress aid. Okay, copy. And can you let me know are you, you're clear of the area? I can start pushing down. I am clear. Copy. Bring it to your right. Coming right. Again, stop, stop there. Stop there. Bring it up. Away from the IA. Okay. Come further right. Copy. Now come towards your feet. All right. Not down yet. Not okay. down yet. Right. More towards your feet. feet. More towards your feet. Okay, now, in, stand by, come back up towards your head, okay, okay, and a little bit to your left, all right, and now down, all right, perfect, nice job, and I believe your are up, okay, nice job, Just guidance, thank you, copy, all right, I'm going to, Nice teamwork. Lock out the right with slack. My right is locked out with slack. Now it's complete. Excellent. And receive Jessica's PGT with the six inch. The new lithium ion battery pushed into place. Now the work begins to take that pistol grip tool, that space drill, drive the bolts to secure the lithium ion battery to its new home. In the meantime, we're approaching an orbital nighttime. The sun starting to set as the International Space Station is 261 statute miles just over Ethiopia in uh, Eastern Africa. Clockwise two. Okay, and I see Alpha 7. Clockwise two. Good settings. Confirm tape line flush on H2. Tape line is flush on H2. Drive H2 16 to 17 turns. Alignment. Copy.
Okay, we are not giving movement of the unlock, and I don't see jacking. What do you saying, Jessica? Yeah, I haven't seen any okay. either. So let's get a little more positive pressure on it. That did look like it bumped a bit down. Okay. And bring your PC with the right. Also to the PC seat. Yep. Perfect. That's the line now. And Stephanie, I, I did you copy our report? And are we good to continue turn? We copy the report. You're good to go. Okay, and as, did you copy the number of turns I, I had on it that I don't think it was stressing? Because I'll go ahead and restart my turn count. We concur to restart the turn count. Okay. Copy. And Jessica, still good alignment? Yes. Now I see movement. Okay, we have a but torque out. Yeah, it doesn't seem Backing down straight, it did just box kind of move right and left. Okay. We did have a torque out, so usually that's just a better position incident. Stephanie, do you agree? We concur. Copy. That was one. I would say one turn before it torques out. Started turn. Copy. I am on Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Good PGT settings. Let me know if you want me to lock out that PGT rat too, with that in case that's pulling. Okay. Actually, you have the rat to lock side. Okay. okay. I think I'm, how's the alignment look? I've got good downward pressure on it now. The alignment looks good. Okay, starting turns, I have tape line flush. I see jacking. Copy. I see movement of the indicator. I counted 16 turns. I see. And it looks flush. Great. Green LED, 9.1 foot pounds of torque. Status indicator is in lock. Copy 16 turns, green light, 9.1 on the torque. Status indicator lock. Nice work. And you can transfer the PGT back to Jessica for stowage on her swing arm and unlock and release the red. What about H1? Yeah, I think we're going to do H1. Yes, thank you for double checking me. I had uh, checked off in the wrong place. So you are correct, Alpha 7 clockwise 2 for H1. Okay, and I'm double checking. I do see Alpha 7 clockwise 2. I'm installed tape line flush on H1. Good settings and good check. Drive H1, four to five and a half turns. Copy. And just how's the alignment look? Looks good. Copy. Starting turn. The first bolt securing the new lithium ion battery driven and in place. Now working on that second bolt. And that was five and a half turns. In LED, 9.1 foot-pounds of torque, status indicator is locked. On H1, five and a half turns, green light, 9.1 torque, status indicator lock. Good readback. Okay. Now we are complete. And you can transfer the PGT and unlock and release the red. Christina, next for you will be to relocate the APFR to width 17. For Jessica, you will retrieve the ratchet wrench to brake torque on the battery. Uh, 
copy, and that's battery five. That's affirmed. So with that, the new lithium-ion battery has been installed on the station. That is the last lithium-ion battery from the pallet and the last of the Port 6 truss to be installed. It's not the end of the road, though. They still have a few more moves to complete the installation. The next uh, step will be the two of them will go over to one of the old nickel hydrogen batteries that's currently on the station. They have to unbolt it and they have to bring it over to the pallet. From there, there's an adapter plate that's uh, in its way for stowage and a ultimate disposable. They have to remove that adapter plate. They'll perform a swap, install the new or the old nickel hydrogen battery onto the external pallet for eventual disposal, and that adapter plate will be. Uh, installed onto the station and integrated with the uh, lithium ion battery that they just installed. That'll complete the work of the battery work on the station. Now underway, Christina Cook already at battery 5 breaking the torque, beginning the procedures to remove that battery. And I have tape line flush. Torque is broken on H1. Copy torque broken on H1. Confirm tape line flush on H2. And work. Flash on H2. Break torque. Copy quarter turn on H2. You can stow the uh, ratchet wrench back in the crew lock bag, and I'll take a glove and hap check uh, from you both when uh, when convenient. In work. And Stephanie, I have the APSR installed in WIS 17. Copying is 12. Black on black, pull twist test, and pitch knob is pushed out. Settings are pull back, pull back, box chart 12. Copy, Christina. Those are good APFR settings and uh, good checks. Okay, Stephanie, so I believe now I'll get in a position for the hand off of this battery, um, and then we'll shepherd this one back to you. That's a firm, and if it's a good time, we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you both. Okay, and sorry, I did that. I just forgot to report it to you. I have no change from my gloves, left or right. My hap is dry, and gauntlets are down. Good check, CV1. Also in work. CV1, 
EV2, no changes to my gloves. Dry half, gauntlets are down. Fid checks EV2, PET 2 hours 47 minutes. We show you about 10 hours, I'm sorry, 10 minutes ahead. That would be great to be 10 hours ahead. And limiting consumable is EV2 Medox, 7 hours 24 minutes. Happy. And Stephanie, can you say again PET and distinct catches? Yes, PET, two hours, 47 minutes. And also good news. Am I going to eat just Yes. No, that's okay. I just wanted to pass along good news about the battery adapter plate pair that, uh, that you were working on. Uh, we had good, to, it has good power and good connectivity checks for the battery and adapter plate in slots three and four. Great news. Great news, Stephanie, thank you. Thank you. I should be clear of you here. Okay, this will be an interesting pass off though. I almost think maybe we should go with the original um, yeah, I agree because of, only because of the location I grab the fixture. I agree and also I won't be able to get on the other side down there. Well, it's still gonna be a pretty far pass off Could um the same board of those scanning connectors on the same hand roll where we usually do the pass off? I think I can, but I'm not sure since there's so much hopefully you'll be able to reach me there. Okay. Sure. Okay, and I'm Ingra. The serial number is, I can see it, it's 0102. Got it, yep. Copy 0102, check Ingra aid stowed, tethers clear, and gap spanner clear. Ingra aid is stowed, tethers clear, and gap spanner clear. Copy. Okay, I'm going to get my PVC. Okay. Copy, Jessica and Christina. Christina, Brett to the H1 scoop, locking it out with Slack. Copy, right to H1 in work. to H1, locked out with slack. Copy. That's the pH. PGT settings are alpha 7, counter, clockwise 2. Okay, I have alpha 7, counter, clockwise 2 set. Good settings. Another handover in the communications from the International Space Station should be regaining those communications shortly. Just before we cut to what is now the live view of the International Space Station flight control room, Mir and Cook working to uh, use the pistol grip tool to unbolt that nickel hydrogen battery from its current home on the station. They're going to move it over to the external pallet for eventual disposal. On H1. Find this flush on H1. Release H1 about eight turns. Copy. Eight turns on H1. And just for this, I'll either take you triggering or applying back pressure to keep it stable while I trigger. I've got good back pressure, okay? Stephanie Wilson at the top of your screen, the ground IV. She's the voice from here in Mission Control Houston up to the crew. Jessica Mir and Christina Cook aboard the International Space Station working through their procedures. Okay, 
now getting some of that video communication back from the station. Copy six turns with skipping at five, status indicator unlock. Same settings on H2, Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2. Okay, copy that, and I do see Alpha 7, one or two set. And I'll take the same on this one. Just. Okay. Okay, I have back pressure. Confirm tape line flush on H2. Line flush. Re Release H2 about 19 turns. The first bolt securing that old nickel hydrogen battery to the station has been released. Now working on that second bolt. From there, Mir and Cook will continue their work of shepherding or moving that battery over to its new location for this instance of this uh, nickel hydrogen battery. They'll move it over to the external pallet for eventual disposal. Okay, that's 21. We're skipping at 19. And I see status indicator is unlocked. Copy 21 turn, skipping at 19, status indicator unlock. Transfer the PGT back to Jessica and unlock the rack. PGT is transferred and red is unlocked. Copy once Jessica is in position to receive the battery. Christina, you can remove the battery and hand Jessica the H2 scoop. I'll be handing her H2 once she's ready. Okay, Christina, so I'm going to have to shimmy past you there. Yep, I'm going to move this way. I'm not touching the battery since it's I'm not using the battery to position myself outboard, but I'm using this other one that's fully installed to give you the space. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm good now. Great clearance. I am in the orientation for the old shepherding. Okay, copy. I see that. Actually, this should work. Okay. About the same relative distances as a previous pass off? I think so. Okay. Copy. Okay, I'm going to remove the battery. Yeah, let me just get into a better position and get a local down. Stephanie said I'm going to be passing you H2. Okay, copy. I have a plan for that. OK, 
Okay, I, so if you swing it around and can get it down mm -hmm. to me, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be close enough or not. Here. Okay. I'm going to get it towards you, and I've got spins facing out. I see that. Okay, actually, I have the battery. Copy. Do that. And uh, you have the battery. Meet the battery. Copy. See the wrap? Yep. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to check my safety tether looks good, and it does. Next up, wrap. Like From the helmet camera of Jessica Meir, she has control of that nickel hydrogen battery. Cook uh, getting into a position, they'll have to shepherd it together over to the external pallet. From there, they'll have to uh, perform a swap. Currently in the slot where they plan to put this particular battery is an adapter plate that's going to uh, connect, help connect that final lithium-ion battery that they just installed to the station. Yep. I agree. So they're shepherding this battery over, and the next step will be to swap it once they're at the external pallet work site. Okay, you have the battery. I have the battery. And my goal is going to be to get it more so that the trims are facing station forward to see us so that we can clear this travel fixture. I concur. Okay. I have the battery. Okay, you have the battery. I have the battery. All right, and I'm going to move in for We are in line with the grapple fixture now, but we're forward of it. Okay, I see that. That's great. I have the battery. You have the battery. Okay, I am actually at the APFR. You're going to definitely have to get closer. I agree. I think a little more. more. Here. Communication is key here. 
to make sure that uh, the battery has maintained control by one of the astronauts at all times and to make sure it's secured by a tether. Jessica Meir, this is her helmet camera. She's working to enter a portable foot restraint that'll get her into a good position. She'll get into a position where the adapter plate is now and she'll be the one to unbolt that adapter plate and swap it with the battery that they're currently towing to put the battery back on the external pallet. I have a battery. You have a battery. And is it? Yeah, I'm going to pull it my way. So yep. it is outboard of you completely. Fins are facing Venus. Okay, I see that. This one's just going on your BRT, if I recall correctly. Okay, I'm in. Nice job. Thank you. All right, I'll get my BRT ready. Copy. Jessica, also double check. Ingress aid stowed and tethers clear, and your BRT ret uh, can be attached to the battery tether point. Right, we haven't done that swap yet. So I think we'll have to do that. I think we managed to do that last time, Christina, while during the transfer. And actually, if you, I'm just going to pause one second. I'm going to readjust my TCB. Happy? Take your time. Stephanie, I've gone from a setting of seven to a setting of five and a half. Copy. Okay, Christina, I have my BRT and my BRT rat ready. Okay, so I'm going to start moving it your way. Maybe. It does look like we're pretty far away from each other. I'm still scooched outboard from 
giving you space on the APA part, so I've got some room to grow here. Okay. How's that looking? I can see the fins right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can keep coming, Zenith. You're clear of the EP. And if you can spin it so that the scoop comes toward me. I've got a finger on the back. I'm going to try to push it up. Okay. It up and out a little bit, but yeah, I think back your way. You might need to be a handrail closer. I think we were last time. Okay, do you think you'll be able to hold the scoop for a moment while I do that? I am nowhere near the scoop right now. Okay, not right now, I know, but if I get it back up to where it was. Um, no, I wasn't near the scoop yet then either. Okay. Let's just try, maybe if you stretch out a bit more. Okay. And also, if I need to try to take one foot out, and I might be able to lean further down. I keep coming up. I'm not, I'm still like a foot away. Okay. Repositioning. And stand by, don't bring it up just yet, because you're under the EP with it. Okay. Bring it aft a bit. Now you can start coming Zenith. The scoop around the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, I think I am going to come a handrail closer. Okay. You want to put a tether, still tethered to the battery. So let me know what guidance you need for that. The tether is one handrail closer, so I feel comfortable. Okay. You can always come back down if you need. I mean, technically, I feel comfortable moving over to that handrail. Um, you know, I have a local down, but it would mean that my hand would be off of the battery here for a moment. It is rather to me and not going anywhere. So. It is, and I agree, and the fins are up, so yeah, it's it, in a very good position. I agree. Let's see what, what Stephanie thinks. Checking. Jessica, Christina, we like how you're working through it. It's uh, the plan is your discretion. Copy. All right, I'm going to move to one hand real closer. Okay, copy, and I'll keep an eye. Okay, that's complete. And now I'm going to pass it up to you. I see that. Let's 
She's here. I've got it. I've got control. Okay, you have control. Do you want me to? I, I'm in a good spot too. If you want to stick your BRT on it, or are you going to do okay. that? I'm going to. I don't think I can reach the tether point to BRT. Okay. Uh, to rep to it. So I think okay. I'm just going to rep the scoop. Okay. So if you want to take it and throw the rep down and then hand it back to me, that's another option. I've got a rep on the scoop. Copy. And. I still have control of the banner, so. From the helmet camera of Jessica Mir, you can see her holding on to a body restraint tether. Once Christina Cook is getting in a good position and Jessica Mir is ready to receive that battery, she'll use that body restraint tether to uh, attach, essentially, the old, the old battery to herself. She'll keep it there while she uses the pistol grip tool to unbolt the uh, adapter plate currently right in front of her perform a swap and a handover to uh, Christina Cook while still having that battery attached to her. And then once the slot is free of the adapter plate, she'll put that battery uh, that's that will be on her body restraint tether back onto the external pallet. All right, my rep is trying to release. There it goes. All right, it's all yours. See a good config on your BRT? And your role is in golf right now. You're wearing a head copy. I can move it to Fox Star if you'd like. Okay, and it looks like you will need someone to hand down that PGC just where the bag is on itself. Stephanie, um, would I have a go-to translator to the EP? Yes, that's a firm. You have a go. Brakes are on. Happy. And before I do that, Jessica, do you want that roll? The top stroke? Um, yeah. If anybody want, I'm just going to get this. Okay, make sure this is tight on my BRT. Good call. I have a lot of momentum. Okay, yes, and I will take that. All You know, if you want me to try to rock forward to help you. Yeah, that is it. I'm, I'm a little concerned that with that um, battery that rolling you might, you know, end up, if I do go backward with it, it might not be um, come out of it. So I almost think given how much, you know, mass is on this right now, we just keep it at golf if that's acceptable. Okay, we worked with that last time, so we can make that work and we can do it as needed. Okay, copy and concur. I'll be translating onto the EP now. See, you'll film me on your Ingrid feed. Jessica Meir now has control of that nickel hydrogen battery freeing up uh, Christina Cook's hand to make her way over to the external pallet, getting in position to uh, aid Jessica Mir with some of the tools, and in a position to receive the adapter plate once it's been removed from the external pallet. I am 
slowly translating, given that I'm on the EP, up to the or are you back location? Yeah. Copy. All of the EP previous reminders apply, and when convenient, I'll take a glove, happen, gauntlet check from you both. My copy. Okay, and that's a good time for me. I am looking at my glove. No change in the last report. Stephanie on my glove for EV1. My half is dry. And are your gauntlets in place? Are my gauntlets are in place? Yes, sorry about that. Copy, thank you. Good check, CV1. PET is three hours, 18 minutes. We show you about 10 minutes ahead. Limiting consumable. EV2 Medoc, seven hours, 25 minutes. Copy. And copy. And I'm going to give you a glove report as well. Copy. Sunrise in two minutes. Copy. Okay, I see no change to my glove. Half is dry, gauntlets are down. Copy, good checks, EV2. Thank you. And I'm at the ORU room. Christina, we see you there, uh, retrieving the ratchet wrench with the hex driver. And I would say, Christina, since you are in front of me right now, you can get in a good position to break torque. You go ahead and do that. Um, Eventually, we are going to have to TCA in closer. See? If you're not in a good position, we can always do that before breaking torque. Let's see if it works. Good position for H2. That was just an eval, and then we'll do H1 first. And good position for H1. Okay. If you're good with it, um, I can do the torque breaking. Stephanie, you uh, We're still here, and uh, Christina, understand you're in position to break torque on H1. Confirm one line flush. Affirmative. I have one line flush on H1. Go to brake torque, max one turn. Torque broken on H1, quarter turn. Quarter turn H1. On H2, confirm one line flush. Jessica Meir breaking the torque of the adapter plate on the external pallet as the sun rises over the horizon, the International Space Station, 259 statute miles over the South Pacific Ocean, about to enter into an orbital daytime. I believe you said a third of a turn on H2? Affirmative. Copy that. You can swap the uh, ratchet wrench at the ORU bag for the PGT with a hex driver. Take it off the adjustable, and the adjustable is still on the handrail, Jessica. Take okay, copy for your awareness when you back gather. Houston copies as well. Hey, here's a team coming out here. Uh, do you want to go ahead and do the base GPA you mentioned now? Let's take this and evaluate. Okay. I can take it. Okay. 
I'm going to need you to move Zenith a bit, okay? Thanks. Yeah, that's about as far as I can get. Okay, I see that. Yep. We're going to want downward pressure, so, yep. Okay, so, Luca, are you with us? And Luca is here with you. Okay, Luca, I'm going to need about 20 centimeters closer to the I understand you need some GCA, about 20 centimeters closer, and I'll put the system in work, and I'll let you know when I'm ready to maneuver. Okay, copy, and Christina, good where you are. I have clearance on you, so I'll let you know you're getting too close to me. Okay, copy, and I'm going to go clear for this as soon as the brake drops, so copy, and I can, I can move lean back as well. Copy. Luca Parmitano inside the International Space Station at the controls of the robotic arm. At the end of that robotic arm is this pallet that we're looking at now, the external pallet. Jessica Mir looking to uh, unbolt that final adapter plate, that black structure, immediately in front of her view. Just needs it to be a little bit closer, so she's working with Parmitano on the inside of the station. Parmitano at the controls of the robotic arm, about to move it into position for a better reach for Jessica Mir. Motion, continue. I think I see motion, actually, maybe that was just me moving. But APFR has a lot of play. Yep. Okay, copy that. And uh, I'm starting motion right now. Okay, copy. You know, when that battery's on your BRT, yep. it can move you and you that was me moving, yep. yep. I see good motion. Continue. Okay, good motion. And the three, two, one. You have 30 cent 20 centimeters. Okay, and stand by. Luke, I'm just going to evaluate before we call that complete. Okay, standing by. Brakes are not on. Yep. And I have a. Uh, I think that's going to work, Luca. We'll call that GCA complete. Copy GCA complete. Brakes are on. Go for EP ops. Okay, copy. Brakes on. Jessica, confirm one line flush on H1. After PGT settings, Alpha 7, counter clockwise 2. I see Alpha 7 counterclockwise 2 is set. Good settings. Okay, and starting turn. Pallet now in a better reach. Jessica Mir working on that first bolt. And is skipping. Copy eight turns uh, with skipping. At this time, you and Christina can evaluate the reach of Christina's BRT ret to the adapter plate handrail tether point. And I'm on structure. Yep, and it is the one that is down. Okay. Yes. I was just going to offer about putting this bag away. Is, is that something we're going to need to do? Or, yeah. um, it will be after this. So we could put away everything except for the PPC. And separate 
Stephanie, just checking in with you. Um, if there is a step, just throw everything in the bag at this point before Jessica comes back to get the scoop. I'll go ahead and do that now. Christina, at this time, it's dependent upon what get-aheads are done, so you can leave the bag and it's current config. Okay. And just is that going to say that you think it'll okay. be in, yes, in no, the way? Yes, no, if you don't mind, if you mm -hmm. can just uh, Velcro the top down like it was yep. before so that's not all flying out, and that'll okay. be a little bit easier to manage, and then we'll do, I'll take care of the stuff. Okay, perfect. I'm not pulling that PVC out of your hands. Yep, yep. No, I've got it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Oh, great. Yeah, that's a lot better. Try to save Venus here, so you won't have to invest much. Stephanie, on that, a TCV setting of four and a half. That's for EV1. Copy EV1, four and a half TCV setting. And Christina, do we want to? Do you want to try to pass the ret up, or do you want me to get a ret on this one? Well, I think since this one is closer, if we did it like last time, you would get the ret on. But I think you know we've sort of shown we can do it both ways. So I don't think I have a strong preference. I think it'll be easier with your ret this time because I have a battery on the BRT. Okay. So let's try that first. Okay. I like it. Pass to my BRT ret. Twenty seconds to a twenty second handover. Yeah, I have it. Copy. Another handover in video and audio communications should be regaining that very shortly. What you just saw was uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook working on that last set of procedures to uh, take the adapter plate off from the external pallet and swap that position with an old nickel hydrogen battery 
to be installed onto the pallet for eventual disposal. That adapter plate will be integrated on the International Space Station next to that lithium-ion battery that they just recently installed to complete its integration with the station. Regaining some of that audio communication, this is the team leading our two spacewalkers through the spacewalk today, as well as maintaining the systems aboard the International Space Station. Well, I see. Or you could drive the uh, feet in. All right, I got one foot out. I think it's going to work. Okay, and be aware it's on, it is around your ingress stage just a tiny bit. Yeah, it'll be an easy one, but. Is on there now. All right, great. I'm ready to do it. What's that PGT? <laughs> How do you reach? Yeah. <laughs> so understand Christina's BRT red is now to the adapter plate handrail tether point. It is. Copy that. I have PGT settings for H2 when you're ready. Okay, stand by one. Stephanie, I, I took one foot out of the, of the uh, APFR, that red on, so I'm just gonna get that back in. Copy that. I'm back in. I'm ready for PGT settings. Alpha yeah, 7. Alpha 7, counterclockwise. <laughs> Good settings, counterclockwise too. Confirm that set. Confirm one line flush on H2. I have one line flush on H2. Drive H2, about 19 turns. Okay, copy your mark. You're going to torque out on the position. Torque out again. Let me try to get to a better position. Jessica, for this, uh, were you, do you feel you got uh, any turns on it before it torqued out? Um, yes, it turned about a little less than one turn. Copy, less than one. Just driving it closer would help. I'm in a good position now. And Stephanie had 12 turns and skipping. Copy 12 turns and skipping. I'm going to put a few more turns on it just to make sure it's all the way out if you're okay with that. We concur. Yes, I do think it is really. Copy, and how many additional turns uh, did you get? Two additional turns. Copy, two additional turns. You can tend the uh, PGT toward the uh, ORU bag and work to transfer the uh, adapter plate. Okay, copy. I copy as well. I'm on the handle right at the base of your APFR. My CRT is pointed up with the jaws up. Oh, did I just get rolled? 
Nope, you're on golf still. I am pulling on H2 and it doesn't actually see what he's released. When I take a jiggle and an extra pull. Uh, I I might need to uh, GCA it to the right so I can pull equally from both sides. Right now I can't reach H1. That one more time. Copy, Jessica, we're discussing. It is not releasing. Okay, and do you have eyes on your battery? Yeah, I'm moving it right okay. now. I'm gonna move down then to get out of but not too far down because of my red on the AT. Jessica, Christina, we're still discussing. Okay, copy. And what I don't have any more Christina is the TG2, so copy. Can you go there and hit it. Jessica, we'd like to have you assess if H1 is released and if you need to GCA the arm to have access to H1, uh, we'd be fine with that. Okay, copy. I am going to need some GCA for that. So, um, Christina, why don't you go back to structure, I guess, if you, are you kind of straddling right now in between or? Yes, but, and my RET is still on. Right. At the place. So, Stephanie, I think it would make more sense for Christina to be on the EP since she is ready to be adapter plate. This is Checking. Concur, Christina? Yep. yep. We're going to need you on there anyway to get the PPC, so you need it again. Yep, no problem. I'm all the way up to the top, of course. <laughs> Jessica, Christina, we'd like Christina to translate onto the EP for the arm motion. Copy, it works. So keep an eye on my VO2 right because I'm going to retrieve my locals. Okay. I don't want it to stretch out. Copy. So, Christina, right now, if you look to your right, your safety cutter is okay config, but it is actually under one of the cams of that grapple fixture. Okay. And that might be something to fix on the way back over. Okay. Looks like we're passing over. Near Patagonia right now, I can see those turquoise leaks. Nice. All right, and I'm going to have you to make sure the rep stays um, towards the AP. The AP, can you? And my BRT is in your reach. I'm going to pull it out in front of me. Huh? Oh, that. And then I'm going to use your ingress aid to translate over. EP. You're going to feel me on the ingress aid. And then, all right, there we go.
All right. But I'm going to kind of hug in instead okay. of going all the way to the external handrail this side. Okay, and the battery's behind you. Okay, perfect. And I'm up near the PGT, so I can hand that to you if required. And I'll go quiescent for an easy. Okay. I'll let you go a little further, Zenith, first. Perfect. That looks good. And Christina, okay. it appears that you might be in a position to have access to H1. If so, would you be able to wiggle H1 and see if there's any motion in the adapter plate? Yes. It looks like it is released because right now it is a bit canted to the right, as in like the right side is further down than the left. So I think that to me it looks like H1 is released and H2 is not. Christina can assess that. Copy, understand you feel H1 is released and H2 is not. We will let, I'll let Christina get a hand on it to, to confirm that. Yes, H1 is Copy. Copy H1 is released. We'd like to see if we can drive H2 more turns with the PGT. Copy. Right up. And either Jessica or Christina, whoever has the best access, uh, can do this. Thank you, Jessica. Been the AC stores. Copy that. Okay. I have the PGT. Okay, you have the PGT. Okay, and if you can move Zenith again. Yep. And then maybe I can I lock out my rep. That's something else we haven't done to be part of what's going on here. Got my VRT rep. I guess that's true. Maybe we were loading it before. Yep. My VRT rep is locked out. Copy and I see good alignment there. Do so you want me to continue with counterclockwise, Stephanie? Yes, Alpha 7, counterclockwise, two for release. Okay, copy. And Christina, I need you to move a little bit more Zena so I can lean in. Okay. Yeah. I think we're pulling on the red again. You might need a little bit more slack in the red. Confirm one line flush on H2. So with a quick uh, tug test from Christina Cook, yep, it sure is. It's one okay. line flush. You've got it. the duo determined a few more turns are needed for that second bolt to release the adapter plate. Copy and concur. Jacking. Again, again, once they remove that adapter plate, that'll free up the slot so they can put the old nickel hydrogen battery. They'll perform the swap and take that adapter plate over to the station to be integrated with that final lithium ion battery. where you might want to okay, put a it's finger on it. It's definitely loose now. Yep, confirm. Yeah. I'll put a finger on it so it doesn't come out. Got it. Um, a better angle, because... Uh, I think I can push on this connector, my connector. Okay, got it. Yep, good. Okay, good Stephanie, job. it is definitely loose now. Tina, hold on one second. Let me make sure I get clear of you. Okay, holding. And then we'll put the eyes on my rut. It's still slack. Okay, all right. I'm ready for you to translate. Jessica, additional okay. turn count, please. The additional turn count was 13 turns. It is definitely released now. Jessica, you said 15, one, five turns? One three. One three, thirteen. Thank you. Hey, 
and then I'm going, if I'm clear to translate in front of you, Jessica? You are. Okay. okay. Christina, you may have uh, reported this. Double check your RET unlocked. It is unlocked. Thanks for checking. Copy. Thank you. All right. I'm in a reposition to receive this on my BRT. Okay. And a uh, reminder about your uh, safety tether there. You'll need to get that when you go by in the cam. Okay. Copy. Okay. I see that. You know what? I'm, I don't have a local down. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, just I'm only oh, worried no, about that. Can't do that. Yeah, yeah, you're, right. you're right. Okay. Cool. I will do that when I go by. Jessica Meir now handling the adapter plate. Christina, I'm ready to push it down. Okay. You want to get your DRT ready to receive? Mir now both has both the adapter plate and the nickel hydrogen battery in her possession. She's about to hand over the adapter plate to Christina Cook. One paddle out, two paddles out. Okay, okay, I have it on my BRT and my BRT wrap. I'm going to slide it in between you and the EP. Okay. If you can get it going in that direction, that'll help me out. Kind of like pushing oh it down, but if it gets just going against your BRT. Yep, agree. agree. Just watch the APFR. Okay. Between the APFR and the ET right now. Okay. Lean back to get out of your way. Christina Cook, adapter plate in tow. You can sort of make out Jessica Meir in the uh, portable foot restraint. I'm going to get my safety cover off the cam. Okay, copy. Jessica, Christina, nice work. Christina, we see you en route to the IEA. And Jessica, when you are ready, you can retrieve the battery from your BRT with H2 in your right hand. That is in work. And actually, I believe that H2 should be in my left hand. In the orientation that I'm looking at, I see the connectors on the left. And that's the uh, proper alignment. As Cook makes her way over to the integrated electronic assembly, that's where she'll be installing that adapter plate, a plate right next to the lithium ion battery that the duo recently installed onto the station. You can see from this view, uh, Jessica Mir pulling over that uh, nickel hydrogen battery that she had on her body restraint tether. 
pulling it right in front of her and sliding it into place on the external pallet. She's using those handling aids, those scoops, to guide it into place. Stephanie, I am ingressing my APFR and maybe roll a foxtrot. Copy roll at foxtrot and uh, verify gap span, or, gap span are clear and you have good reach to the PGT with a hex driver. I won't have access to the PCC. That's a good call. I'm going to go get that. That's over on um, H1 of the BC. That's you. The gap scanner is clear, so I'll go get the PCC. Copy. Stephanie, I am in soft dock. Copy soft dock. Jessica, lock out the RET with Slack. And work. That is locked up with flat. Copy. Next is the PGT with the six inch. I'll have settings when you're ready. Copy. And I believe we're only driving H2, correct? That's a firm. The last uh, nickel hydrogen battery soft docked into the external pallet. Mir will only have to drive one bolt to secure it to the external pallet since it'll it just have to be disposed after this. And that'll complete the uh, battery swap work for the old batteries. And Stephanie, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with the AP on my BRT retrieving the PGT. I would propose that maybe I go ahead and ingress and get it soft off, and then by that time Jessica will be here to assist. It's just there's a lot of um, things on this IEA, and I don't want to risk um, the AP impacting anything. Christina, that's a good call. We concur. Please continue with ingress. I had a good cow, and I have Alpha 7 clockwise 2 set. Good settings. Confirm tape line flush on H2. Work. Tape line is flush on H2. Copy. Drive H2 16 to 17 turns. Good tracking. Company, I have 16 turns, good green light, and 9.2 forks. Copy 15, 1, 5 turns, good green like 9.2 on the torque. Uh, all correct except for the turns, it was 1, 6, 16 turns. Copy 1, 6, 16 turns, check status indicator lock. Status indicator is locked. Jessica, with this um, work on the battery complete, you can stow the PGT, release the RET, 
And then we'd like you to meet up with Christina at the IEA. Your call if you'd like to remove the scoops prior to doing that or do that when you come back to the EP. Um, if I'm not packing up the bag now, I may as well just get the scoops when I pack up the bag. If that's what you mean. Yes, it is what I mean, and that's fine. Okay. With that, the final nickel hydrogen battery has been installed onto the external pallet. The pallet itself now loaded with all planned eight nickel hydrogen batteries for disposal. So rather than leaving it on the PCC where it would be on the PCC for your ops, it just took the piece, the adjustable. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I see it. Hanging but now up. it'll just have to go, it'll just have to return back to the bag unless you actually translate onto the EP. But the, the adjustable is still there unattached, so I just have to remember to pack that up. I yes, see it. Exactly. I see it. Yep. Okay. Christina, for the adapter plate, friendly reminder, we'll need uh, inspections uh, of the IEA and the adapter plate. Okay. Reminder, and I can give you that the IEA pins are good, no FOD, no FOD, no bent pins on the connector on the IEA, and good in my band. Copy checks on the IEA side. Stephanie, so I'll egress now and join Christina. Yes. Okay, in work. Again, Jessica Meir completing her work, installing that old battery onto the external pallet just shy of four hours into today's spacewalk. Cook now on the final steps of installing that adapter plate onto the station. Mir on her way to go aid her in those final steps. Uh, with the blind made connectors oriented ISS outboard, place the adapter plate in soft dock. And the EP will be staying where it is right now, right? So I can ingress aid and. That's affirmed, Jessica. Okay, copy. Yeah, Jessica, I'll also take your help getting this stopped up. I don't have reach to H2 from ATFR, but I do have it aligned. So I think once you get here, we'll be in business. Okay, I'll talk to you. I'm on my way. Like you've arrived. Yep, I'm just to the side of you, so I'm going to be coming on your left. Want me to go to the H2 side? That would be great. Okay.
Okay. And you need to come to your left. Okay. And there we go. Yep. Yeah. And now I think you need to come straight down. All right. And then you've got H2. You're putting pressure on H2. All right. Or back down there. Uh, hold on. Come up again. Okay. Get to a better position. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I'll lean back so we can have room. So I see a good alignment on my end, and I think H1, H2 side is a little higher up than H1 right now. Let me, okay. And then I'll let you guide down, and I'll just kind of follow you on this side. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just popping up here because I don't have a... wonder if DRT might be necessary. Yeah, I'm going to have to put my DRT okay. down. I'll, get, I'll take control of it while you do that. I think you got it. I got it. Okay. All right, you got something. Okay, I've got, H, I've got H2. Okay, copy. I am just barely so have the heater mat. It's out, okay. of my, it's out of my reach now. So, how's the AP? Maybe okay. there. All right? Yeah. Oh, I pulled it out. It it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not. We had it and I pulled it up. My son. That was there. It's on. It's on. Okay. Stop that kicking so. <laughs> nice job. Oh, gosh, thank you. All right, here's where I don't want to pull it back out with my rut, so I'm going to unlock my rut. Only it had locked itself, so I didn't have it locked. But. Okay, copy. Looks good. Copy, nice work. And uh, Jessica, are you in a position to retrieve the PGT with the hex driver? Or would you be able to translate over and uh, hand that to Christina? I can't reach it where I am, but I can go get it for sure. Right, and I can grab it from there. I'll just scoot it my way. Okay, got it. I have the piece. Okay, let me move 
fast and a bit out of your way. Hey, Stephanie, I have the TCP. Copy, and uh, if, Christina, if you're happy doing the adapter plate work at the IAA, we can send Jessica back to the EP to continue her work, or would you like her to stay at the IAA for the adapter plate uh, bolt driving? I'll definitely have her stay. These bolts are pretty far out of my reach and far, so she will be a help. Okay, I will stay. Copy that. With that, PGT settings, Alpha 7, clockwise 2. So we've got Alpha 7, clockwise 2 set. Okay, and I'm going to get a BIT down again because we're in a good position here to help out the because may need you to trigger this. Confirm one line flush on H2. Put some pressure on the bat. There we go. Okay, we got one line flush, and now we can apply back pressure if you can trigger. Okay. Or I can, or we can lift up the other way. But if you can trigger, I'm on back pressure now. Or otherwise, I'll relocate. I'll pop it back out, and then I'll be able to get that. You spin it around. I can easily trigger as well. All right. So you've got back pressure. Yeah. Hey. See it driving. Okay. That was eleven, so going. Christina Cook uh, driving that bolt, the first of two to secure the adapter plate to the station. This adapter plate adjacent to a lithium-ion battery that the duo installed recently on today's spacewalk. If you can, I pull it out, but yeah, I can stand by. I counted 18 turns, and I think it stopped, but since I was, um, I do see, I see a good green light. And I see 8.1 torque in, okay, you guys happy with that? Copy, green light, 18, one eight turns, 8.1 torque. We do have a red fault light that I Checking. think that from when we stopped it. Uh, I don't think, actually, and it does say low torque, we do have low torque. Oh, okay, so and it, and it does have a green LED? Yeah, huh. okay. And we need to hit this again. We concur. Yeah, We'd like you to hit it again. It. Copy. All right. I'll take that back pressure, Jessica. Sure. Okay. Yeah, how does it look now? Now we have a green light and 9.0 torque. That sounds good. Fault is cleared. All right. I'm pulling it out. Copy green light, 9.0 torque. Was there any additional turn? No, oh, it just torqued out. It just copy that. The bolt. No additional turn. Copy that and understand. Thank you. Same setting for H1, alpha 7, clockwise 2. Okay, copy. And I'm looking at the alpha 7, clockwise 2. And we'll Copy. I'm going to have to do it the same way on this one, Jessica. Okay, I'm going to have to relocate them. On H1, confirm two lines visible, one line flush. Okay, we've got two lines visible, one line flush. I'm going to get the position. Copy. Um, Drive H1 four and a half to five and a half I turns. Okay, copy. Excuse. On my way. I see there, and I had to go for turns, so I'm triggering. 
First goal bolt complete. Now uh, Christina Cook driving that second bolt, securing the adapter plate to the station. That was five and a half, and I got a, a good feeling, so I'm going to pull it out just to check how to get to look. Okay, I have a green LED, 9.4 foot pounds of torque, and it was five and a half turns. Copy five and a half turns, green light, 9.4 uh, on the torque. You can tend the PGT uh, back to the crew lock bag, and I believe your red's already unlocked, and you can release it. And, uh, and Christina, you can egress as, as well. Okay. I'll go ahead and egress so I can get it if you want to um, head back to the EP. Sure. Is that either way? And Stephanie, did you still want um, Jessica to head back? Yes, we'd like Jessica to head back to the EP. Thanks for the help, dude. Good to know without you. Okay, and I'm just going to here for a second and adjust my TCP again. 20 seconds to a 20 second handover. We're in another handover of those communications, both visual and audio, from the International Space Station. Transferring communications from one TDRS satellite to another. These are, are geosynchronous satellites that provide video and audio communication from the station. This uh, break is expected to be a short one. In the meantime, you're getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station flight control room. From the forward end of the camera to the back, it's T.J. Creamer and, uh, and uh, Judd Freeling, flight directors. Judd Freeling being the lead flight director for this spacewalk. Capcom is uh, Mark Van Hyde talking to the astronauts inside the station. The voice you're hearing to the uh, two spacewalking astronauts now is Stephanie Wilson at the end there. Mir and Cook finishing the installation of that adapter plate to the station. They'll need to... Uh, mate a cable to complete the installation. This adapter plate is adjacent to the lithium-ion battery that it needs to connect to. Now regaining some of that communications to witness the final parts of this work to install that adapter plate. The views you're getting from station will start to get a little bit dimmer as the International Space Station crosses over into an orbital nighttime. Now 261 statute miles over Lebanon. I will take your hand with the ret since I am my waist feather is on the APFR. That would be awesome. Okay. Um, if you can't get to it, then I, I can't. I don't think I can get to it right now with your head there. Okay, yep. Um, I can run away. I don't want to stretch it out, so uh, is that better? Let me. Come even more outward. Sunset in two minutes. I'll keep you down. Happy.
sunset on the International Space Station. Station itself, 261 statute miles over the southern border of Armenia. I am at the APFR, so I believe I should head on, on to the EP. That's a firm, and uh, you will retrieve the scoops from the battery that you just installed into a slot Charlie. Okay, and um, when you say retrieve the scoops, am I going to put them in the bag, or what am I going to do with them? You will stow them on your mini workstation and eventually place them in the crew lock bag at the IEA. Okay, and so am I also packing up the ORU bag? First, to just stow, then I would rather do that first and then get the scoop at the end. Copy that, and uh, we were just discussing that and I'm going to offer that plan to you. Okay, that is in work. For the bag cleanup, the uh, hex driver from the PGT needs to be stowed on the pit pin rut inside the uh, small ORU bag, and you'll also retrieve the uh, small trash bag from inside the ORU bag. Okay, copy. Mirror over at the external pallet working on some of the cleanup activities with the tool bag that she left there at the beginning of today's spacewalk. I have the three TH clamps lifted, and I'm about to remove the connector from the dummy connector. Copy three TA clamps removed, and you are working to demate the adapter plate dummy connector. That's good for you. Okay, and it is demated. Copy, adapter plate cable is demated. Next is to retchew and remove the cap from the battery in slot six. Stephanie, I have the hex head off of the piece on the pit pin. Good pull test. Copy. And uh, Stephanie also did want to report, I did have a little bit when I was just at the IEA, I did have a little bit of the eye irritation that I mentioned last time. It is gone now, but just wanted the team to be aware. Everything is uh, fine right now. And we copy, Jessica. Thanks for the report. TCV adjustment seems to do the trick. And we copy. Glad that's working out. Also for the small ORU bag, in addition to the retrieval of the small trash bag, you will also relocate the round scoop that is inside the bag 
to the microconical on the outside of the bag. Okay, copy. Christina, check WVS. Okay, let's see that. I have removed the cap from the connector on battery in spot six, and I can see no pod, no bent pins on the pin side of that connector. Copy the inspection, and you can clear also when mating the cable, the gap spanner inboard and away from the work site. And when you're ready, mate uh, the cable to the inboard. Copy. Mate the cable to the battery, P4 to J4. Okay, and I can confirm no pod and good EMI band on J4. Copy the inspection. Stephanie, I have the small trash bag on my mini workstation in the bayonet and I also did attach my one end of my adjustable from my mini workstation onto the lid as I used to do in my usual stick. Jessica, so understand small trash bags on your mini workstation and you moved an adjustable from yourself to the small ORU bag. I have an adjustable on my mini workstation. It was just tethered to both ends to my mini workstation. I moved one end from the mini workstation to the trash bag. And we copy. Thank you for the clarification. 20 seconds to a 20 second handover. That and Stephanie, our P4 connected to J4. Now install the cap. Copy and concur. Another handover in those communications from station again should be regaining it shortly. This is the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the Orbit 2 teams here leading our two spacewalking astronauts, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook, through their procedures at the final steps of uh, conducting the battery swaps on the port six truss, finalizing the installation of that adapter plate and connecting it to the lithium ion battery. After the handover, Christina, we copy, you made it the cable and installed the cap on the battery. We did not copy lever over center. Uh, due to the uh, handover. Okay, it was made it over center, and I'm now working on the cap. Copy. 
happy you made it over center. You're working on the cap, and after that, you can close the three TA clamps. Copy. Christina Cook on the final steps, working with that adapter plate. In the meantime, this is a view from Jessica Mears' helmet camera. She's already on to the, some of the cleanup activities over at the uh, tool bag that she left over at the external pallet, putting away all the tools that they used during the uh, duration of today's spacewalk, including uh, some of the handling aids, some of the torque wrenches, all being put into that tool bag. Japanese round scoop is now on the microconical on the outside of the ORU bag. Copy, Jessica, and we'll take an inventory of the ORU bag. In work. Okay, Stephanie, on the ORU bag, external, as just mentioned, I have a round scoop on the microconical. I have one large small adjustable and one small small adjustable on the outside of the bag. Copy, that's a good external config. On the inside of the bag, I have a RET with a pit pin with the 9-inch hex on it. I have one extra adjustable. I have a RET RET series with the ratchet wrench with the 9-inch hex on it. I have a RET RET series with the PGT, and the PGT also has an adjustable on it. Copy checking. Jessica, there should also be a small, small ret that is now loose, but was originally attached to your trash bag. Confirm, sorry, I missed that before, and I see it now. I see the small, small. Copy, that's a good inventory of the small ORU bag. For Jessica Meir, all of the equipment that was... installed on the dummy connector, on the adapter plate. I'm working on the TA clamps next. Copy, Christina. Jessica, once the PGT is stowed in the ORU bag and the bag is all buttoned up, we'll have you retrieve the scoops from the battery you just installed in Charlie and stow those on your mini workstation.
all the tools in Jessica Mira's tool bag are accounted for. She's closing it up now. And there's a few more handling aids to attend to while at the uh, external pallet. In the meantime, Christina Cook, making that final collection, just needs to close some clamps very close to finalizing her work installing the adapter plate to the station. Hey Stephanie, so the scoops um, want me to get this ORU bag on my BRT first, or am I not taking it now? Jessica, you will take the bag. You will eventually bundle the small ORU bag to the uh, APFR that's uh, very close to the EP. Okay, copy. And the scoop. Stephanie, I have the three two. Go ahead. And Jessica, the scoops uh, will end up in the crew lock bag. Copy. Stephanie, for me at the IEA, I have the three TA clamps closed. Copy, nice work on the adapter plate connections, and uh, we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. Copy. No change on my glove. Hap is dry, gauntlets are down. Copy checks EV2. Christina, next for you is a scoop of retrieval. There are four scoops on the IEA, two on battery six, one on the DCSU, and one on the PFCS. Copy. For Christina Cook, that completes her work installing the adapter plate. And that's the final procedure for installing the adapter play and moving that battery. That task is now done. I have the two scoops now. The move on to uh, cleanup procedures and get ahead tasks, if time permits, now just a little bit over four and a half hours into today's spacewalk. First, uh, Christina Cook set to uh, retrieve some handling aids as part of her cleanup activities. And then the teams here in Mission Control Houston will assess what is next for these two crew members.
to go to Casita. I'm going pretty well. I am putting the scoops that I retrieved from Battery 6 into the Kulak bag. And copy. And Houston copies. Okay, and I have the ORU bag now and the scoop. So I am ready to translate off of the AP back over to my APSR. Copy, Jessica. Okay, the scoops from Battery 6 are now attached to an adjustable ret from the Kulak bag, and I'll go for the other two now. Copy, Christina. The one from the CSTS is a crew as well. Copy, Christina. And Stephanie, before I remove that scoop, that's the best handling aid for uh, getting this crew lock bag off of the battery tether that it's on, or sorry, the SU tether battery tether point that it's on. I'm going to go ahead and um, take off the crew lock bag from the DCSU tether point. We concur. Okay, I have to report that my Acer HCM has deployed. That was not intentional. Oh, and eyes on it. Copy, and this is EV2, correct? That's affirmative. Copy that. It's gone out of my vision. I'll stand by the investigate. And I am back at the APFR so I can get over there quickly. Christina, can you tell us, is the HCM still in the tray or is it out of the tray? It is out of the tray and it is connected by the cable. Copy, out of the tray, connected by the cable. All right, so I have my hands on it and can confirm that it is power off. No issue there. Copy. We uh, copy power off. There's a caution. Be careful not to accidentally bump the power switch and place a local tether down. Manual ISO valve handle, port and left. Take it closed in the up position. Work. And I do have a local tether. Copy. I am in process of bundling this bag right now. Do you want me to leave it just tethered and go over to Christina? 
I'm assuming that would be the better plan than spending time here on this bag right now. Jessica, we concur. Okay. I do have um, one rat, one of the adjustables attached to the EPFR boot plate with the ORU bag, and so I'll tidy that up when we come back. And we copy the report. Christina, we'd like to double check on the action manual ISO valve handle closed and up. That is not complete yet. I am in work on that. Copy that. Christina, I'm headed back to you. Copy. I'm wait for you to just do that. Just flip the day and night, leaves in my mirror to see that location is. I concur. Sit tight. Where exactly are you? Are you on the aft side of the IEA? Yep, on the radiator side. Yes, okay. I, and I'm at the top of the outboard gas spinner. So basically, once you get to the top edge, We'll be here, and I'm going to go ahead and orient so that my manual isolation valve is facing inboard. So you'll, when you come up, and then we can run the hand controller. I'm happy I see you now. Okay, I can see her left hand though. The man isolation valve is down. And I think we would like it up. That's a firm. We would like you to take it up. Okay, copy. You're getting a live view from the helmet camera of Jessica Meir. She and Christina Cook, fellow crewmate, on the International Space Station now, working through some of the cleanup activities after successfully installing a new battery on the International Space Station with an associated adapter plate. And all of the old nickel hydrogen batteries have been moved to an external pallet for eventual disposal. I'm going to around so she's on that side, so we can work on this together. Gathering all of their tools, they're looking forward to the next set of procedures now close to five hours into today's spacewalk, four hours, 49 minutes. Looking forward to plenty of time to conduct uh, perhaps a few get-ahead tasks. Standing by for some of the procedures for those. Copy, now we check the HCM config. Check the power switch is off, OFF. It's off, OFF. Check the mode switch is in rotational. It is. Check display blank. Christina, Jessica, we may have missed it. Christina, uh, is the does, is the display blank? Display blank. Okay. 
Play is late. Copy that. We did miss it. Stand by. Checking next steps. Christina, Jessica, when stowing the HCM, verify that the umbilical will not snag during deployment. And with Jessica's assistance, route and stow the HCM umbilical. HCM, Jessica. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get that. Can you okay. keep your hand on it? Yep. I'm, I'm going to need you to rotate because you know yep. I won't be able to stow it unless I'm down into position next to it. I believe that I need to get the. And I can get a BRT down if I'm stable. Yeah, I'm going to get. I'm going to have to get my BRT down as well, but okay. I'm, I've got a scoop in it right now, so. Okay. So, Scoop on an adjustable. I can hand you an open hook for it. Where is the scoop going? Or if we're right next to its location, maybe we could just get rid of it first. Yeah, I think it's going, going in the bag, right? Yeah. yeah. Scoops are going to the crew lock bag. Happy we got that. Here's the hook for it. Sunrise in a minute and a half. Happy? Here you go, Christina. Okay, I'll send this back to the back. Okay. Can I give you one more? That will help me. Absolutely. Let me grab another open hook. It's off the other side on my mini workstation. Jessica, when you have a moment, and uh, if you might be in position, check uh, Christina's WVS, and then once you're both in position, I'll have words on the cable routing. Okay. And stand by, Stephanie. We're just going to stow this one other scoop. That it's not on my mini workstation. Copy. Mir and Cook working together to put their tools away into the crew lock bag, their tool bag. A little bit larger of a bag. In the meantime, the uh, sun beginning to rise as the station and our two spacewalking astronauts enter into an orbital sunrise, 259 statue miles over the South Pacific Ocean. Put on hooks for the crew last bag. The remaining one is on the DCSU. Copy the scoop config. Thank you, Christina. Okay, Christina, if you can come toward me okay. and then present that area. Yep, exactly. Okay. Can you move station forward a bit? Yep. Right. Okay, pause there, and can you come a little bit, well, actually, that's in first view, just right now. Jessica, Christina, for the cable routing when stowing the HCM, the umbilical can be routed counterclockwise around the HCM, umbilical, around the HCM grip, umbilical folded in half and inserted through the loop, and then umbilical fed through the loop until taut to minimize slack near the umbilical connection to the HCM. Happy, I think I, are, I do recall how to do that routing. I am just trying to get in a, in a position to get that done, and I will need you to get that actual, um, the, the base for it closer to me. Okay. So you can translate station forward a little bit. Okay, pause there.
that was a lot more difficult with the gloves on. Yeah. It's not easy without the gloves. And Jessica, we think uh, winding the cable in the other direction uh, would be helpful. Yep, I'm just going to try to remind myself which orientation is supposed to be. And also inserting the uh, hand controller module into the tray first and then routing the cable. Yep, I'm going to try that now. What you're looking at now from the helmet camera of Jessica Meir is one of the control panels used on the SAFER unit. This unit on the bottom of the uh, portable life support system, sort of the backpack of the uh, extravehicular mobility unit of Christina Cook. Jessica Meir just uh, reinserting it back into place and rerouting some of those cables. This is a device that uh, if Christina Cook were to become untethered, she would use this control panel to uh, manipulate the thrust of the safer unit and get her safely back to the station. ...seated well in the base, and the actual um, joystick portion of it that we actually, for direction, should be uh, on top towards Christina's head, correct? That's a firm. Jessica, now that you have the module in the tray, routing the umbilical counterclockwise around the grip and then folding it in half and inserting it through the loop. That's in the work. I've got it partially in there. And Jessica, also pull it in half first and then pull it through the loop. I did that, but I just noticed that one side is still on the other side here, so I'm going to have to take it back out. Again, this is the control panel used, or that would be used in um, in the event that the safer unit, the simplified aid for EVA rescue, were to be needed during today's spacewalk. It was inadvertently deployed, so Jessica Meir is just uh, putting it back into place, making sure the cables are routed in the correct orientation uh, to allow it to go back into its stowed position. Might help.
Jessica, I know easier said than done, but as much as you can fold the cable, and it might end up that it's four pieces folded together, that would then uh, fit through the loop. Yeah, I am trying to do that. And I see that. Also And Jessica, uh, best effort for the routing, uh, uh, as you're able to route it such that the uh, door closes, uh, that would be fine. Okay, copy. I'm going to try to get one, at least one part through that loop as, like I had it before. I think that that might work. There it goes. This might work. Okay, Christina, I'm gonna need you to move a little bit more a little bit closer to me. Okay. There. I'm going to pin through now. And that's right. We also, uh, before the module is stilled, we'll need to check that the power switch is still in off, and you'll pull up uh, on the uh, handle to uh, stow the uh, tray. Yep. I am familiar with that. Copy. And the power is still off. Copy. I wonder, actually, Christina, if you could help me. Uh huh. Because I'm having, I'm trying to push it in and hold the door and pull the handle at once. Okay. If you can actually pull the handle up. Your GoPro's in the way right now. If you get your spring arm out, yep. Come back. Now go up. Yep. Keep coming back. There you get there you're on it. Now you can lift up. You know when to drop a little bit can you lift more? Hmm? Still not going in, so I'm not sure why. 
to lift a little bit more, I think. Okay, so it was just your hard stop. I dropped it. Um, and this was, there was kind of two different places where the pen has to fall through, right? Okay, I see what happened. Okay. It, was, it was not seated all the way in the base okay. plate. Okay. So it was it was impacting the top of the handle. Okay. Let's try that again now. That was a good thing. Okay, I'm holding it up. Okay. Now down. Go now. Okay, good. Now we're through the, we're through the case. I just need to come back up a little bit in order to get the door. Okay. I gotcha. I can pull it up again a little bit if you want. Let's try that. Okay. Pull up. Right there. Pull up. Now down. Go down. Again. Now down. There you go. We got it. <laughs> Door is closed. Wow. Nicely you done. Are my hero. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Wow. Last step is the uh, man iso valve handle. Take it to the open, a down position on the port left side. And with a little bit of teamwork, Mir and Cook got that uh, control panel for the safer back into a good stowed configuration, continuing the cleanup activities before the next steps. Nice job. Thank you. That's amazing. Again, all the battery work uh, scheduled for today has been complete. And Jessica, Christina, in this config, we would not uh, count on Christina safer. Copy. Copy. Okay, Stephanie, where does that leave us? So we have still the two scoops that were on me. Those are in the Kulak bag now. And Christina is at the Kulak bag. I'm going to work on that last scoop. My last marching order. Christina, that sounds good. And also cycle your WVS. Checking on steps for Jessica. Jessica, we'd like you to head back to the uh, EP to continue work with the ORU bag and uh, stowing the ingress aid on the EP APFR. I also need a glove check from you. Losing communications from the space station. Just before that last call again, Mir and Cook working through some of the cleanup activities. Successfully stowing that control panel for the safer unit back into place. That safer unit, one of the um, one of the last lines of defense for uh, for uh, tether configuration, just in case they were to become untethered. They got a lot of uh, good tether configurations and uh, safety steps to make sure that they will be safe and attached to the International Space Station and will resume their duties as such. Making sure they're attached and all of their equipment is attached as well. Continuing through their norm normal procedures for cleanup now. I'm sorry, so to the APFR, so the ingress aid on the APFR to the boot plate. And then check tethers clear. Then you can, once you're five foot clear, you can give the arm a go to the back off position. Okay, copy that, didn't work. Those final calls, uh, cleaning up the worksite over at the external pallet, just making sure all of their tools and equipment and put foot restraints are cleared from that structure. And they'll give the go for the robotic arm to back away the external pallet from the structure. The cannon arm two currently holder the external pallet, currently holding the external pallet close to the worksite where Mir and Cook have been swapping the batteries throughout the duration of today's spacewalk.
Stephanie, I have the last scoop on the crew up bag. Copy, Christina. That is the scoop from the DCSU now stowed to the crew lock bag. So you have six scoops in the crew lock bag. Both around, that's correct. Christina, next for you is to deconfigure the PGT stowing the hex driver onto the socket caddy and stowing the socket caddy in the crew lock bag. The PGT with the Ret Red series and the adjustable will be stowed on your swing arm. Copy. Again, Mir and Cook continuing to work through the procedures for cleaning up the work they have done, successfully installing the last lithium ion battery onto the port 6 st structure on the far end of the International Space Station. Now just uh, in the process of gathering all of their tools, making sure they have all of the uh, pieces of equipment that they have left at various locations around the work site, including the external pallet. This includes uh, the space drill that they've been using. This includes some of the handling aids called scoops. And they're just checking the boxes to make sure they have all of the equipment that they brought out with them. They'll tether these uh, different tool bags and tools to themselves, all before making their way back to the airlock. Now, five hours, 15 minutes into today's spacewalk, the International Space Station over the uh, South Pacific Ocean, approaching the southern coast of Chile. And Stephanie, if you agree, I'm going to move the GoPro that had been on my swing arm into the crew left bag. Christina, that's fine. And Christina, friendly reminder, as you're working with the bag, you will also retrieve the small trash bag uh, for the gap spanner cleanup. Another uh, important piece of equipment for conducting a spacewalk, a gap spanner, really just a line to connect uh, two points on the outside of the International Space Station, making it easier to translate or move between those two points that may or may not have all of the right uh, handrails to make the trip from A to B the most efficient. Copy. The last checks for um, arm motion are to check tethers clear, and then when you're five feet of the EP, give the arm operator a go to the back off position. Okay, and the uh Big picture, am I going to go back there to get a gap spanner or am I going to get both of them? Just wondering what's next. Jessica, that's a firm. You'll go back to the IAA, retrieve the gap spanners, assist with cleanup there, and then come back to the uh, this uh, APFR ORU bag bundle and uh, pick it up on your way in. Well, in that case, before I give the go for the um, E, I will just move outboard and I'll clear myself that way. Copy. And when convenient, we need a glove, half, and gauntlet check. Okay, copy. That's in work now. And 
Stephanie, my gloves have no change. My gauntlets are down, and my hat is dry for EV1. Copy. Good checks for EV1. PET, five hours, 18 minutes. Limiting consumable remains Maddox for EV2, seven hours, 35 minutes. And I have checked this third on the soccer caddy, good full test. And the GoPro is also in the two lock bag. Copy, Christina. And I'm the ratchet. I'm working on the PG. Copy. Stephanie, I'm currently on the inboard side. Am I getting the inboard depth better? That's a fern if you're getting the inboard gap spanner chain and also um, verify the PVR pit pin is in place once you're at the IEA. Okay, copy. I'm right over top of that and I can tell you if it's in place. Excellent, Christina, thank you. If it's all right with you, I'd like to change the um, adjustable from the PVC and just put it on my mini workstation instead of wrapping it around the PVC again. And we concur. Copy. I'm just up here to your left. Okay, yeah. Okay, Stephanie, the PVT is installed on my swing arm without the socket, and the adjustable has been removed. Copy PGT with the Red Red series stowed on your swing arm. The adjustable is on your mini workstation. And is my next retrieve the uh, trash bag? Yes, next retrieve is the small trash bag. So the gap spanners are on the stanchion. So if you, if um, Stephanie, your plan is to release this um, aft radiator side end of the gap spanner, and then I'm going to translate around to the other side and stuff it in from over there. And we like that plan. Okay. And Jessica, just double checking, you feel there's good clearance for the arm to maneuver to the back off position? Yes, sir. Good clearance for the arm. Copy. Thank you. Stephanie, for me, Christina, I have the small ORU bag on my Bar. Copy, you have the small trash bag on your uh, on mini workstation. Yes, small trash bag. <laughs> and I'm in a good position to do the inventory if you'd like. Copy, Christina. We are ready for the inventory of the crew lock bag. And I'll start with external. 
Externally, I have one large small adjustable. Copy checking. And that's a good external config. Thank you. Okay, next we'll start with the integral rep. On one integral rep, I have a round scoop. Another integral rep, I have a flappy caddy with a nine inch hex. Another integral rep, I have the cap that we removed for the semi connector. And next I'll we'll start with the rep on D ring. A okay, RET RET series, an adjustable, it goes to next is A series. It goes to a ratchet wrench with a palm wheel and a six inch, inch wobble. Next, I have another red series, turn adjustable. This. A long duration tie down tether. A GoPro on an L bracket with its own internal rep. And another rep rep series. Yes. Going to an adjustable. One. And I believe that completes the inventory. Copy checking. Christina, thank you. That's a good inventory of the crew lock bag. And as I stuff everything in, question for you, will we be retrieving our rounds? Checking. And Christina, to answer your question, uh, it is not necessary for you to retrieve a round scoop from the crew lock bag. At this time, we are thinking of having Jessica perform the CP9 uh, activity, and uh, we'd have you continue with the cleanup of the IEA and then um, head towards the airlock. And Stephanie, I have the inboard gap spanner um, stuff basically 99% of the way into my trash. So I do not have a RET on it, but because almost all of it is in the trash bag, do I have to go to release and then stuff the remaining part in? Jessica, you have a go. Christina, for you, once you're able to pack the uh, crew lock bag back together, you'll retrieve it and uh, bundle it to the APFR that's there at the IEA.
from the helmet camera of Christina Cook going through that last check, making sure all the tools in this particular bag, the crew lock bag, are accounted for. We have a good check on that inventory. They're uh, almost done cleaning up their work site. They're going to try to squeeze one get ahead task in there now that we are five hours and 28 minutes into today's spacewalk. There's a filter on one of the cameras that's a little bit blurry. They're going to change out that filter. That'll just be Jessica, though. Christina Cook herself will make her way back to the airlock to wrap up today's uh, spacewalk. Still a few uh, get ahead or uh, cleanup activities to do over at the work site first. Again, they're at the port six truss. This is the very far end of the International Space Station. A few more things to clean up before they try to squeeze in that one get ahead task before ending the today spacewalk. We'd like to offer or ask if it would be helpful for the uh, outboard gap spanner chain if before Jessica heads back to the EP, she releases the nader side. Then Jessica, you could uh, do that on the outboard gap spanner, then head back to the uh, EP, APFR to retrieve your APFR ORU bag bundle. And Christina, um, I can uh, head outboard and, and remove this end for you if you want. Um, sure, if you're in a good position. I have the crew lock bag packed, and since she's releasing that now, I mean, do you agree before I bundle that with the APFR, I'll go ahead and gather that up in my trash, the um, gut spinner in my trash bag? We like that plan. And Jessica, I'm ready to reel it in when, we, when it's free. Yeah, this one's on the stanchion as well, so it's just a little bit difficult to release. Okay. I'm working on it now. Copy. From the camera view of Jessica Meir working on that uh, gap spanner retrieval. This is one of those tools that they need to uh, move as part of their cleanup activities. The gap spanner itself, just a strap connecting two points across the work site, containing all the batteries that these uh, two spacewalking astronauts have been working on for today's spacewalk and the spacewalk last Wednesday. A gap spanner just being an aid to uh, move just a little bit easier across those batteries.
Jessica, I'm happy to just take it from here if you want. That's, I know that's a pain. Yeah, it's just um, this one's opposite orientation than the other one. Okay. The other one I got actually more easily than I right. thought it would be. But um, trying this different orientation here, and this might work. Okay. The reason I... Yeah, Jessica, a, t a technique that might be helpful if there's additional slack in the gap spanner is to uh, use the fabric of the gap spanner to uh, fold the gate back. Uh, and nice that work. Only works if the, if the, that only works if the gap spanner is on the, the uh, gap spanner itself. This is actually on the stanchion, so you can't really use that trick. Um, it didn't quite reach, but it is released now. Copy, nice work. Thank you. You're welcome. Jessica, big picture for you after you retrieve the uh, EPAPFR with the ORU bag bundle and stow it on your BRT, you'll retrieve your green hook and then we'll have you uh, work the CP9 task. Hey, copy, and can you remind me if CP9 is the zenith or the nadir? CP9 is the nadir side. We are working on grabbing one of those foot restraints. She'll have to attach it to uh, her body restraint tether, one of the tools needed to uh, gather before uh, re-entering the airlock. But before she does, she's going to make a quick pit stop at one of the cameras on the outside of the space station. It's got a foggy lens uh, filter, so they're just going to remove that filter. Okay, Stephanie, so I am going to bring this um, PFR over to the port CETA cart for my first action. Correct? That's a firm. Stephanie, the outboard gap spanner is retrieved and in my small trash bag. Copy that. Nice work. Then, as you mentioned, uh, bundling the crew lock bag to the APFR is next.
Again, uh, Jessica Meir and Christina Cook going to split up for a bit as they start to wrap up today's spacewalk. Meir grabbing one of the foot restraints to move it to a new location at a crew and equipment translation aid. Cook, in the meantime, uh, gathering some of those final components, those final tools, before making her way back to the airlock. Mir will be able to stop by a camera. This is a high-definition external uh, camera on the outside of the space station. It has a bit of a foggy lens, so as one of the get-ahead tasks for today, Mir will just remove that uh, filter and put it in her small trash bag that she still has in tow with her now. Christina, cycle WVS when able. And she'll make her way to the airlock after that. WVS is the wireless video system for Christina Cook, just uh, regaining the communication from that uh, helmet camera assembly. Okay, where are you in the get-ahead? I am not in the get-ahead yet. I'm still working Four. on this ATFR. Ah, okay. Got it. Uh, and I am, I'm rotating the collar, and I cannot get any of the pedals to move at all. And Jessica, we copy, and uh, we realize sometimes those uh, APFRs get sticky in the whiff. Um, when rotating the collar, then uh, perhaps placing a hand on structure to have something to react against, and then um, being able to depress the, the pedals. And Jessica, are you saying when you rotate the collar, you're not able to get it rotated far enough to allow the pedals to, uh, to depress? It seems like that right now. I mean, when I rotate it, it's definitely not black on black. There are no white lines on this one. There is a yellow line, a yellow, maybe that was a white line. But I don't know that it's going far enough over because, um, yeah, I, I can't even, the pedals are not even budging. Are you going the long way? Copy. Like in the direction of those arrows? Those little triangle arrows. Yeah, I'm going in the direction okay. of the arrows. Okay, cool. And it is moved, so I can see a different when I when it's blocked. I can see a clear black on black. Mm -hmm. When it's rotated over, it's the edge of the black is now like touching. So it's not. It's exactly not on it. It's one black width displaced over. But Copy. I believe the white needs to go up. Um. My recollection was the, the white would have been where it looks kind of yellow now, and it's um, definitely not rotating that far. I'm 
your recollection is what I also believe from having been it on this one. That it needs to keep going? Yeah, that it, it sounds like it's not going far enough off in the direction of those triangles. Yeah. It moves, it moves very easily one width over. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. Stephanie? So one width of one black line, it moves very easily over. So I thought that maybe we were there, but there's absolutely no play at all in the in that position. Stephanie, while you guys think on that, just um, because I'm ready for next steps, I want to report I have the crew like that bundled on the APFR, and am I good to pull up my fair lead? Yes, you're good to pick up your uh, fair lead uh, and uh, stow the adjustable on your mini workstation. So I guess what, uh, what we would be useful information, Stephanie, is if we are confident that it's not rotated all the way over, um, given that config. So does that make sense, what I said, one width over? So if I put it back, I don't know if you can see out of my WVS right now, do you have a view of it? Jessica, we do have uh, the APFR in view, but it's not, uh, the view is not close, of us, close enough for us to make a call. I see. Okay. So if I twist it out of black on black, it moves exactly one width of the black marking. So now the edge, edge on the part I'm rotating is, is basically flush with the outside edge of the black mark that it was before black on black. I agree with you, Jessica. I don't think it's rotating far enough. And I think my next step is to pull up my APFR. So if I can get up to do that, I can give you exact words about how far it rotates. Okay, Kathy, that would be great. Me. Is that indeed my next step? Stephanie, easy two. I have you, Christina. Okay, copy. And, uh, Christina, I copy you. Stand by, please. Jessica, um, we'd like you to check side loading. Uh, see if you can, uh, if a different body position would uh, give you uh, additional rotation on the collar. Okay, copy. I'll, I'll keep working on that. I have been trying um, a couple different body positions to rotate it. So far, no joy, but I will about it. Christina, go ahead. Um, Jessica and I were talking about the possibility of um, if my next step is to remove my APFR when I do so, I can give her words on the exact rotation that can be expected. Copy. That's a good plan. And Stephanie, I've tried another body position. You know, based on um, the recent video that I watched, a lot of times out here, putting one hand on structure might actually induce more side load. 
So I've been trying the technique of actually using both hands on the APFR. Since the microgravity, I shouldn't really be loading it. Um, that is still not, still not budging any further. Copy. And Jessica, I can verify that the unlock position is when the black mark on the bottom collar is lined up with the yellow mark on the top. So it does sound like yours is not. Okay, so it's not, it's not even close to rotated over yep. there. That's what it sounds like. And Jessica, we concur. We would expect additional rotation on the collar. Okay, I'll keep at it. Done further. Awesome. I think I got it. All right. Wow. For AV2, I have my APFR and crew lock my bundle on my BRT. Copy, Christina. Next, retrieve your green hook from uh, 5388. And I'll wait on Goose for that. And, uh, okay, and I've, got, I've got it out of the yes now. Nice job, Jessica. As the sun begins to set on the International Space Station, flying 262 statute miles uh, right over the southern border of Albania, both spacewalking astronauts have removed their portable foot restraints that they've been working on. With a little bit of finagling, uh, the notoriously sticky piece of equipment uh, removed from the station, they'll attach it to themselves to move to their respective locations. Copy that. Thanks for the check in the survey of the IEA. Nice work on the cleanup. Once again, handing over those communications from the TDRS satellites, putting the finishing touches on the cleanup activities after successfully uh, moving the new lithium ion battery to the station, outfitting with adapter plates and moving some of the old batteries around. Now the external pallet is loaded with eight old batteries ready for disposal. There's still four of the old batteries on the port six truss. This is per the plan. And we'll start uh, seeing some of the next steps potentially to uh, head back to the Quest airlock. This is the team that's been uh, guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through their procedures today, as well as uh, maintaining the rest of the International Space Station. At the forward end, that's TJ Creamer, flight director. Judd Freeling, the lead flight director for today's spacewalk. Mark Van de Heij, Capcom, talking with the astronauts inside the station. And the voice you've been hearing from here in Mission Control Houston, Stephanie Wilson, and the purple coat just standing uh, just behind um, Mark Van de Heij. Now regaining some of that uh, communication back from the International Space Station. Now in an orbital nighttime.
just post you translating in board. And I'll go ahead and follow you. Stephanie, we're both heading to our green hubs now. Copy. Cook and Mir following their tethers back to some of the reels that they've placed on their way over out to the work site. The hooks they're referring to are the uh, tethers that are keeping them attached to the station. Stephanie, I've got my green hook on my red reel, and it is remaining unlocked. Copy, Jessica. Translate to the port CETA cart. Your APFR will be stowed there and with you on the lower left. You know, the spare leading that we did uh, worked really well. Awesome. The tether stayed on that pit hip handrail. That's perfect. Stephanie, I am at my green hook and we're My green hook is on my red reel and it's not off. Copy, Christina. Next for use, translate to the WIFX in the airlock with 11 to stow your APFR.
Mir and Cook again uh, heading to their respective work sites to stow the uh, portable foot restraint. Mir arriving at uh, the crew and equipment translation aid. Helps to move uh, particularly significantly larger cargo from uh, one end of the truss to the other. This is the home of the foot restraint that Mir has in tow. But uh, when you're able, cycle WVS. APFR stowed at a clocking of six and with two on the lower left. Okay, copy, copy. I am just getting there now. And the WVS has been cycled. You know, I can move further Zenith if you're going to go past me. Um, depending on where you're at, sure. I am on In the In terms port. of your, uh, your tasking, and I do see where you are physically. Okay. I can definitely pause here if you want to go by. Not either way. And Stephanie, is that so much? Okay. Checking. Jessica, Christina, yes, we would like Jessica to, uh, uh, sorry, we would like Christina to lead at this time. Copy. Hey, Jessica, I am passing on the port seat right now. I see you. And I am going to um, fairly your safety tether around the Cita cart handrail to keep it in here as I go by. Okay, Kathy. So it'll be release it from the outboard stanchion of that handle. You head over. Happy. And Stephanie, I was in soft dock and was still rotating around to a clocking of six. I currently do have black and black on a clocking of five. Will that set any work, or do you want me to go back to soft dock and get it to six? Jessica, clocking of five is, uh, is fine. The rest of the settings, Romeo, Romeo, Foxtrot, six. Romeo, Romeo, Fox 6, copy. And I do have black on black, and I have a good full twist test in this twist. Copy. 20 seconds to a 20 second handover, and we'll also take the pitch knob check on the other side. Mir continuing to install that. Uh, foot restraint onto its temporary home on the outside of the station just before they uh, complete today's spacewalk. Space station still in an orbital nighttime, 261 statue miles over the west border of Mongolia. That bright light was coming from station on the outside. Now a handover of those Tedris satellites back in the room here in Mission Control Houston. This is a live look at the International Space Station Flight Control Room. More teams here have been guiding through our Th guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through their procedures today. 
in the final stretch here uh, at the end of their cleanup activities, which include stowing that portable foot restraint in uh, various locations. Mir putting her foot restraint over in a place called the CETA cart. This is a crew and equipment uh, translation aid. It's on the truss segment and is able to move uh, large uh, equipment and even the crew f across the truss, Copy, but just a temporary stowage place for now. Regaining some of that audio communication from station. Cook uh, still has the foot restraint that she's carrying in tow. Her, uh, she's going to be stowing it in a uh, worksite interface that's close to the airlock. This uh, cleanup work comes after a day of uh, completing the battery upgrade work that's been done on the port six truss over the past uh, two spacewalks on the 4B channel. This is the channel of batteries that's on the nadir side or the earth facing side uh, on the port six truss on the very far end of the station. That work being complete, the uh, Port 6 truss, both the 4B and the 2B channels on the Nader, the Earth-facing, and the Zenith, the space-facing side. Outfit it with uh, six new lithium-ion batteries, three of which on the 4B channel that they've been working on these past two spacewalks. That work being complete, now just uh, going through some of the cleanup activities before heading back to the Quest airlock to wrap up today's procedures. Six hours, seven minutes into today's spacewalk. Am I about to see this first? Copy, Christina. And Jessica, please cycle WVS. Okay, and work. Stephanie, I am at the airlock, and the question for you is, would you like me to go ahead and hook up? So Jessica has the option to work on tethers while I'm doing the APFR, or go ahead and the APFR and the WIF extender. Christina, we like your offer to hook up waist tether the waist tether uh, in the airlock. Thermal cover is coming open. Copy thermal cover open. And this APFR is just being very troublesome today. Um, I am having some trouble with the touch knob now. I did get it unlocked, and it's just trying to rotate it back to lock. Copy, Jessica. Copy, 
Okay, Stephanie, I am at the airlock, and I can confirm that my right west waist tether is large hook to large hook on the airlock waist tether. Gates are both closed, sliders are both locked. Copy, Christina. That's a good config. And Christina, any gouge on this switch knob? I know you, you had to use this APF file before. I just remember it was difficult to turn, but that it, it would eventually go. But it has been out, you know, long, for a while since I last actuated that pitch knob. Um, you know, you can tell if it's pushed in by whether or not that fastener in the center of the knob is recessed. Yeah, so it's already unlocked. Just can't get it locked again. Right now, the, the center fastener is flush. It's pushed in, and you can, and even when you go all the way back over, it won't, it won't get there. Um, I just can't move it at all right now. And the right when it's that center fastener is flush, I should be able to rotate it. Correct. That's affirmative. Yep. And, I mean, I remember Drew and I talking about having to put two hands on it. There it goes a little bit. Okay, it's starting to move. Stephanie, I'm ready for APFR settings here at um, WIFX. For the WIFF, WIFX in Airlock WIF 11, it's a clocking of three, Quebec, Quebec, Foxtrot three. Okay, I have it in the WIFX, it's pull and twist test, black on black. And the clocking is three, meaning the nine is on the double line that I can see, the line that faces, the double line which faces towards the handle of the WIF extender. Copy all, Christina. That's a good config. I've rotated the knob to lock almost all the way, but it's still not all the way. I'll keep working on it. It's in that config right now, Stephanie, that it is just shy, like one black mark width away from the lock, so it's not topped out yet. It's definitely not moving, not going anywhere, like James Montalvo so eloquently described. <laughs> I'm not able to get it all the way into lock yet. And we copy the APFR gremlins are plentiful today, and uh, the it might be that um, having the pitch at such an extreme with the plates um, 
foot plate kind of off to the side might be impeding the actuation of the pitch knob. So you might be able to make it, put it more in line so you can actuate the pitch knob. Or another suggestion was to uh, try a different body position. I have tried several different body positions. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the boot plate being extreme because it's not close to structure. It's at Romeo Romeo. Right, and so the pitch uh, on that end being extreme on the either end versus uh, towards the center of the pitch settings. I see. I'm hesitant to try to move it back to unlock now because that was also very difficult. Almost all the way unlocked now. Stephanie, for the ACFR and the WIFX, I have it as talking is three, Quebec, Quebec, box three, and this pitch knob is popped out. Being cooperative, and I wish that someone was too. <laughs> we understand and we agree. It's a good settings for uh, Christina for your APFR. Thanks for the report on the pitch knob. You can work to retrieve the crew lock bag and stow it on a large, small uh, air lock rat. And for Jessica, as you're moving the pitch knob, perhaps um, wiggling the boot plate might um, alleviate some of the load in the pitch knob. Copy. From this view, you can see Christina Cook just outside of the Quest airlock hatch, completing her duties, all of the uh, tools that she used for the battery swap today in tow. Jessica Meir over at uh, the truss segment, still trying to wiggle that portable foot restraint into a secure place where it will remain. Stephanie, I may not have reported this, but I do have the ingress base stowed and folded onto the boot plate. Copy, Christina. Thanks for the report. And Stephanie, it is all the way. So black is lined up with black now, as it is, as it should be for lock. And the button now, as the knob has still not popped out, it should when it's locked. I'll try a few more of those shapes. Copy, Jessica. Okay, the crew lock bag is on the large small and it's heading into the airlock. Copy, Christina. With that, you can ingress the airlock. Okay, Stephanie, and now it has popped out. Nice, a little bit though. It does not seem to be popping out as normal. There is a little bit of play in it now that there wasn't before. So I think that we are good here, but um, I just, the next person that comes here, it may not be popped out all the way, so you might not have to push it in as far. And we copy. Jessica, thanks, uh, thanks for working so hard on this APFR. You can uh, retrieve the uh, ORU bag. And uh, what are the what, in what final settings did the uh, APFR end up? I was going to ask. I was going to ask you for um, Roll and Ya. Right now, I have it at Romeo Romeo. So five Romeo Romeo, and we're still at Golf Three. And no, actually, we're at Golf Three. As 
actually look like it's in a nice position right now, but. Copy five, Romeo Romeo Golf three. We like it. At this time, uh, with uh, retrieving your ORU bag and stowing it on your BRT, we'll have you now translate uh, towards the airlock. We're no longer, um, we'll no longer have you do the CP9 task. And uh, as you're heading in, we'll have you uh, check the uh, brakes on the CETA carts. Okay, copy. Jessica Meir uh, finished uh, installing that stubborn uh, foot restraint onto the uh, truss structure of the International Space Station. Just uh, going to take the tool bag from off of it and uh, make her way over to the airlock. Inside of the airlock, Christina Cook completed her task and is waiting for her fellow spacewalking crewmate. Jessica Mir to uh, return back to the Quest airlock. That'll be the uh, final steps for today's spacewalk. Now clocking in at uh, 6 hours 21 minutes. Of course, Jessica Mir still needing to make her way over to the airlock. Afterwards, they'll close the hatch and uh, start the sequence to repressurize the crew lock. Once repressurization is initiated, that'll uh, stop the timer on today's spacewalk. Jessica, check uh, WVS and in particular check the uh, green LED. Hey, copy. Stand by. I do have a green LED. Copy. Like that anyway. Yes, we'll take a power cycle. Copy. Okay, that has been
any any news on the last in the batteries? Jessica Christina, yes, on the uh, the last battery pair, battery and it, and uh, adapter plates, good power, good connectivity. Yeah. And I did two taps on the port Cita cart brake. And just double checking that was the inboard brake release. The inboard brake release. Copy that on the port Cita cart, and we're looking for the same on the starboard Cita cart, the inboard brake release. Press it two times. Sun beginning to rise on the outside of the International Space Station, flying 259 statute miles, just northeast off the coast of Australia. Jessica Mir making her way down to the airlock after successfully installing a uh, portable foot restraint on the on the uh, truss structure of the station. Christina Cook. Uh, already inside the airlock waiting for her fellow crewmate. And Stephanie, I am at our location. Copy. Christina had earlier reported that she was in a good config, waist tether the waist tether. If you'd like, you can reconfirm that from her. And um, on her go, you can remove EV2 anchor hook from the handrail 3651 and attach it to your red reel. And you have a go? Okay, copy. It'll work. Six hours, 28 minutes coming up on 29 into today's spacewalk being conducted today on Martin Luther King Day, finishing the work to uh, upgrade the batteries on the port six structure. Six brand new lithium ion batteries now on the outside structure there, completing the work on two power channels, 4B and 2B on that port six truss, truss uh, segment. You're looking at Jessica Meir making her way down to the uh, Quest airlock to complete today's spacewalk. As she makes her way down, you can see the uh, Northrop Grumman Cygnus vehicle, the NG-12 vehicle attached to the Unity uh, module of the International Space Station. Just in a few short weeks, the NG-13 is scheduled to arrive aboard the station. And today, Martin Luther King Day, uh, Northrop Grumman uh, named the NG-13 Cygnus Cargo Craft after the uh, late Major uh, Robert Lawrence. Robert Lawrence was the first African-American astronaut selected by any program and uh, was specifically chosen for the Air Force's Manned Orbital Laboratory Program, one of their early space station programs back in June of 67. But Lawrence uh, passed away in an accident on an F-104 Starfighter aircraft at Edwards Air Force Base in California six months after being selected at the age of 32. On Martin Luther King Day this uh, day, January 20th, 2020, the NG-13 spacecraft being named after uh, Major Robert Lawrence. Again, scheduled for launch in just a few short weeks in early February. 
In the meantime, as we look at the NG-12 vehicle, Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo craft on the NG-12 mission attached to the Unity module, still getting good glimpses of Jessica Meir making her way back to the Quest airlock to complete today's spacewalk on Martin Luther King Day. Christina, please give us a glove and half check. Just paint on the glove. Up is dry. I have one small cut in an RTV only. And so that's the delta that's on my left index finger. Nothing else changed on the glove. Dry hat. Copy the report, EV2. Thank you. Just I was partially egressing so that I can help you with the uh, small ORU bag. I copies that all right with you guys. Yeah. We like that plan. You know, I'm coming down the feet of spur. All right. I have a airlock set ready for your bag. Mir completing her journey across the enormous truss structure of the International Space Station, now making her way down to the Quest airlock. To me, Christina Cook, who's inside currently, standing by waiting for her fellow crewmate to ingress, completing today's spacewalk. We're now six hours, 35 minutes into today's spacewalk. Just below, you can see the South Pacific Ocean, the International Space Station flying 264 statute miles, just north off the coast of New Zealand.
And I am back. All right. Welcome back. Let's see ya. And I'm ready for your five when you are. Okay. Come back. You know the bag is off my beer. Oh, see that. Grab it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is grab it, and then I'll send your BRT right back down to you. Okay, copy. And when you're ready, I'm ready. It's coming to you. Okay, I got it. All right, and your bag is in. And I'll complete my ingress now. And Christy has some in this position. I think I'm just going to come in heads first, like we talked about. Okay, happy. I've got an end effector on the thermal cover. Copy. Christina, I'm coming up now. Okay, I see so that. If you can move your feet a little bit more. Okay. Yep, I'll come all the way back forward okay. and forward. And the bags are also all the way forward. Perfect. And good. Feet are almost at the rim. There you go. Put them up over the UIA and you're in. There we go. Good job. Okay, Stephanie, I am in and the thermal cover is closed. I'll get the Velcro. Copy thermal cover and clo is closed, Velcro and work. Both Mir and Cook inside the Quest airlock, closing that thermal hatch and the hatch underneath. These are the final steps of today's spacewalk. Six hours, 40 minutes in. They'll go through their procedures to uh, close the hatch and start to begin the repressurization process. Velcro's in place on the thermal cover. Remove the SCUs from their stowage pouches. Remove your DCM cover and connect your SEUs to the DCM. Okay, in work. Copy.
And EV-1, my SCU is locked. EV-2, SCU locked. Copy. Nice work with the SEUs. Friendly reminder that vehicle cooling is warmer than sublimator cooling, and you may wish to adjust your TCV settings to a cooler setting between 8 and max cold if desired. Thanks for the reminder. And with that, take your water switches to off, OFF in the, port, in the forward position. Expect water is off message. EV1, water is off. EV2, water is off. Copy. That starts the uh, two-minute timer before hatch closure. Meanwhile, Jessica, verify outer hatch is clear of hardware. Copy. It works. Some of the final steps of uh, spacewalking is to hook up their suits to the International Space Station via umbilical. Throughout the duration of a spacewalk, they're on portable life support and battery power, now connecting themselves to the station and operating off of, off of the systems there. Now, both of those spacewalking astronauts are on the other side of this hatch, which is fully depressurized. It'll be Andrew Morgan on the inside of the space station in the equipment lock. He's uh, standing by, ready to guide them through those procedures of repressurization. Still with Stephanie Wilson here in Mission Control Houston, guiding the two spacewalking astronauts through those final steps. And it is. It is currently in the unlocked and unlapsed position. Copy, and we're continuing to wait until the two-minute timer expires. Just get a two minute timer has expired. You have a go to close and lock the hatch. Hey, okay, copy, that's in work. Again, Stephanie Wilson, the ground IV, who has been guiding our two spacewalking astronauts through their procedures today, finalizing the steps before repressurization goes underway. It'll be Morgan and Luca Parmatano here on the equipment side, the equipment lock side of the airlock. They'll be the uh, suit IVs for the procedures to repressurize our two spacewalking astronauts and get them back in the hatch. It's not too long until they are out the hatch themselves next Saturday. The two of them, Morgan and Parmatano, will finish the work to complete the repair of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. That'll be the fourth in a series of three. Those three conducted last year. AMS has been sitting in a dormant state since that third spacewalk. The fourth will be to complete uh, that repair work. And that fourth AMS spacewalk will be the seventh in Morgan's career and the sixth in Parmitano's. I think it was something. There is a bag, but it actually there may be an SCU that's holding you up a little bit. So, and bye. Okay, is that a little clearer for you? Perfect, thank you. Yep. Well, I still need to get back more. Okay. Is there something blocking you, or do you want me to pull your legs back? No, nah, something is preventing me. I'm pushing myself back, but I'm not going. Okay. Can you see what's behind me? Maybe um, oh, yeah, it's a blaze cover, I believe. A blaze cover? Um, check your um, SCU pouch on your BRT. That might have been it. There you go. 
Okay, try again. I'm all the way to port and forward. I think it's your plus, actually. Hey, our, there our we go. I've, I've rotated and now we're good. But it did get bumped back to the hatch key. Okay. Come back. To your foot. Okay. Bring it down. Now I'm going to need to come back further. So okay. you can rotate with your plus forward. Okay. I rotate my plus to the outer. Okay, and I'm going to get position there. Okay. Rotate it more. Okay. Okay, the hatch is latched and locked. Copied hatch is closed and locked. Nice work. We're transitioning to the pre-repress cue card. Hey, Stephanie. Thank you. On your DCMs, check SCU connected to DCM. D1, SCU is connected. D2 connected. Check water switches and off. D1, water is off. D2, water is off. Jessica, on the crew lock, check EV hatch closed and locked. EV hatch is closed and locked. Christina, on the UIA, check oxygen EM1 and 2. Two valves are open. Oxygen EME 1 and 2 are open. Christina, take power EV1, EV2. Two switches to on. Power EV1 and 2 are on. I have two LEDs on, and I have 18.6 volts on both EV1 and EV2. Copy two LEDs on, 18.6 volts on EV1 and EV2. On your DCMs, take your power switches to SCU. Expect a warning tone. Copy that, and with that, Jessica and Christina, you are my heroes. With your diligent work, you have restored the uh, 4B channel to full strength. We thank you for your work, and it has been a pleasure to work with you on behalf of the 2B team. Ten seconds to hand over. Copy. Thank you very much, Stephanie, and we'll... Short handover and a communication. We'll be back uh, momentarily to go through the uh, repressurization sequence. Stephanie Wilson, the ground IV, the uh, voice that you've been hearing from here in Mission Control Houston up to the crew, guiding them through the day's procedures. The clock's still ticking on the uh, program elapsed time you after the handover and I'm going to start over my thanks because I wanted to ask a rhetorical question which I messed up so I have to set it up again.
So, yes, you are my heroes and the heroes of the entire team here. With your diligent work, you have restored the 4B channel to full strength. We thank you for your work. It's been a pleasure to work with you, and I have one rhetorical question. Who is your favorite team, the 2B team or the not 2B team? <laughs> well, as Shakespeare said, to be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> so with that, we would like to thank you very much, Stephanie, and our heartfelt thanks go to everybody down there on the NASA team for their efforts in making today's spacewalk and this entire Space Station Battery Upgrade Series successful. Just thanks to Luca and Drew as well for getting us out and back in safely. This has really been an amazing experience being part of this Expedition 61 EVA team. Today is also Martin Luther King Day, a personal hero to both me and Christina, about his wise words for this moment. We may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. And one has a spectacular view that we have today, looking down on our one common home, planet Earth, these words resonate loudly. Thank you, Jessica. And to add to that, you know, you and I, we often say how much we owe to those that paved the way. And that doesn't just mean in spaceflight. It also means those who work for civil rights and inclusion and who know that how important it is to go for all and by all. And that's why it's so meaningful for us today to be out here on the day we honor Martin Luther King Jr., who paved the way not only for us, but for so many that have a dream. Jessica and Christina, those are wonderful words, very heartfelt, and there are smiles here, and uh, we all echo your sentiments. So again, thank you very much, and with that, I'll hand you back over to Drew. Thank you, Stephanie, and hello, Drew. Anna Goose, tremendous job, mission accomplished. Let's get you repressed out of those suits. We've got dinner waiting. <laughs> With that, if you would, take your O2 actuator to press. In AB1, O2 press. AB2 is impressed. Copy. Actually, Both of your O2 actuators are impressed. Goose, if you check the EV hatch, MPEV is closed. Stand by, Drew. I think I'm actually not impressed. Copy. I flipped all the way to off. I'm just going to try to get it back. Copy. And then I see you uh, reaching there to assist. And I got it, Drew. I, I got it in press. Okay, I see you in press. Good job. Hey, copy. EV1, EV2 are in press. Um, Goose, if you could check the EV hatch, MPEV is closed. MPEV is closed.
Okay, we're going to start to start the repress. We'll be throttling and uh, let us know let us know if it gets uncomfortable at all. We're going to start out nice and slow. We copy. Copy. Christina, that's just barely off of off, and let me know, and we can walk it up. I'm good, Christina. You good? I'm also good. Hey, you can bring it up. Too. Okay, copy. We're going to dial it up a little bit. And repressurization is underway. Morgan guiding the two spacewalking astronauts back to the pressurization of the International Space Station. Repress started at 12.33 p.m. Central Time. That puts our program elapsed time, the total spacewalking time for today, at 6 hours, 58 minutes. Station flying 268 statute miles now over Chile, crossing over Argentina here soon. Again, that program elapsed time, the total space walking time for today, 6 hours, 58 minutes. Starting the repressurization sequence at 12.33 p.m. Central Time. Once again, the uh, pressurization is sequential, so we'll make our way up to five pounds per square inch, pausing for a leak check. Okay, I'm okay with more. Are you, Christina? Yep, I'm also good. Hey, you can pick it up. For reporting purposes, I just adjusted my CCD, and it is currently at max hot. There's no issue with that for the team. No issues from Houston with Max Hot. Two PSI, and the rate is good for me, and I could go faster if I wanted to, but it's fine. I concur. We can bump it up, Drew. Copy. We'll bump it up a little. Hi, 
We're going to pause, wait two minutes here for pressure to stabilize, and then we'll do our leak check. Currently holding steady at five pounds per square inch. This is a normal check just to make sure there are no leaks. After this leak check, they'll uh, proceed back up to the pressurization of the International Space Station at 14.7 PSI. Starting our one minute leak check. Jess and Christina, we got a good leak check. Check uh, that your gloves are switched off. Heat, uh, heaters are switched off. In work. EV1 heaters are off. EV2 heaters are off. Copy, and any contamination on gloves to report? No contamination for EV1. Negative EV2. Hey, copy. Let's take your O2 actuators to IV. EV1 is an IV, EV2 is an IV. Copy EV1, EV2 are both an IV, and we're going to resume the repress, and we'll walk it back up to norm again. Copy. Sorry, repress.
Good leak check at five pounds per square inch, heading up to the pressurization of the station, 14.7. Making its way a little past six PSI at this point. Morgan checking on the rate, everything looks good from the other side as well. A few stats for you while they're repressurizing up to the pressurization of the International Space Station. This was EVA 63, the 63rd conducted out of the Quest airlock, the 226th in support of International Space Station assembly and maintenance. For Christina Cook, this was her uh, sixth spacewalk, but in 2020 it was the second conducted of uh, this year. It's the eighth of nine spacewalks planned for Expedition 61. Even at eight, we're at a record for all-time number of spacewalks during a single expedition. For Jessica Meir, this will be the third of her career, totaling 21 hours and 44 minutes. For Christina Cook, it's the sixth spacewalk of her career, totaling at 42 hours, 15 minutes. That's uh, number 21 for all uh, spacewalking time, cumulative spacewalking time for any astronaut. Third for women, just behind uh, Peggy Whitson and Sonny Williams. Today's spacewalk lasted again six hours, 58 minutes, wrapping up at 12.33 p.m. Central Time. The total spacewalking time for all 226 spacewalks that have been in support of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance come out to 59 days, six hours, and 10 minutes. Again, this was the eighth of nine spacewalks conducted during Expedition 61. Copy. Morgan and Pomertano will head out the hatch this Saturday for that ninth spacewalk, and that's to complete the work, uh, the repair work done on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Say your last again, Christina. That was 10 PSI. Copy. Repressurization going as planned. A little more than 10 pounds per square inch at this point. Again, we're getting uh, just above 14 pounds per square inch, about the same that you would find at sea level on Earth. Yes, Copy. And Drew, did you say you're, that you're at norm? Yeah, we're at norm. Do you okay. want me to slow it down? No, norm is fine. Just want to make sure we were there. Okay. Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano guiding Jessica Meir and uh, Christina Cook through the repressurization process. A little more than 13 PSI at this point.
Okay, we're just about fully repressed, and we're going to be transitioning into the post repress procedure. Copy, thanks, sir. Copy. The crew lock fully pressurized. Morgan now working to open the hatch and work the procedures to get our two spacewalking astronauts who just completed a six hour, 58 minute spacewalk to fully upgrade the uh, power upgrades, the battery upgrades on the far port truss of the International Space Station, get them back inside the equipment lock and start removing uh, the uh, suit components so they can finally eat after a long day's work. Facing towards the camera is Christina Cook. Airlock Houston on one. The ground is put in step four for post EVA in work. You're a go to continue through that step. That's an airlock copy. And we're going to continue the comm on space to ground one. Um, I'll let you know when it switches. We will continue on one. Airlock Houston on one. Step four is complete. You are no longer hot mic'd. Morgan and Parmitano walking the two spacewalking astronauts through the procedures to uh, get the suits off. One of the first steps is to remove the safer unit. This is the simplified aid for EVA rescue. Provides propulsion that would uh, propel them back to the station in the unlikely event they were to become untethered. But you heard the various uh, checks and uh, verifications throughout today's spacewalk for that tether configuration. Christina Cook, uh, the first into the hatch, you can see the umbilical. Now that they're inside the station, no longer relying on the portable systems connected to the station systems providing uh, 
the consumables they need, water and, uh, and oxygen. Again, Loku Parmitano and Andrew Morgan locking Christina Cook, who's currently in the equipment lock. The forward end of the camera. Andrew Morgan in the crew lock, all the way in the back, grabbing uh, Jessica Meir, EV1, the suit with the red stripes. They're communicating with them through their comm, their comm units on the uh, equipment lock. No longer hot mic'd, or uh, which gives them the ability to talk through the suits immediately to the space to grounds. Now hooked up to the inside of the equipment lock to talk with their suit IVs. That position being held by Luca Parmitano and Andrew Morgan, walking them through the procedures to uh, doff or take off the suits. Again, one of the first steps is to take off the safer unit. This is at the bottom of their sort of backpack area that provides life support, comm equipments, and all the necessary systems to, to conduct the spacewalk, that safer unit. Will be the first one removed. You can see the handles being worked by Luca Parmitano now.
Jessica Meir in the suit on the right, the suit with the red stripes. Safer unit is removed. Now getting into position to start removing some of the equipment. Some of the first things to be removed will be the tether configuration containing all the tools they needed. Sort of their uh, workspace on their chest. Where they were able to access their tethers and uh, tools throughout the, the, the duration of today's spacewalk. Some of those tools, including the pistol grip tool, which you can see at the right waist of uh, Christina Cook on the left there. Again, Morgan and, Morgan and Parmitano walking through the procedures to doff or remove the suits from Christina Cook on the left and Jessica Meir from the right, who just completed a six-hour, 58-minute spacewalk. This includes removing some of the tools that they had attached to them, the safer units, which uh, were at the uh, base or the bottom of the uh, portable life support system backpack of the suits. Some of the procedures include uh, turning, the uh, making sure the lights and the cameras on their helmets are off. And of course, they'll be removing the uh, gloves and helmet.
losing video communication from the International Space Station as we've uh, experienced throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. Still sitting here with the Orbit 2 team who have been overseeing the procedures for today's spacewalk, led by Flight Director Judd Freeling. It's been Stephanie Wilson, who has been the ground IV, the voice uh, to Christina Cook and Jessica Meir throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. Now that responsibility handed over to uh, Mark Vandehei. You see seated next to Stephanie Wilson on the far end of this screen. But right now, the step-by-step -step procedures in the hands of the suit IVs. That's the responsibility of Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano walking through the steps to get uh, Christina Cook and Jessica Meir out of the suits. They've had a long day. That uh, six-hour and 58-minute runtime just includes from the time they switched their power to uh, battery power, and this was after the uh, suits were um, the suits were in the crew lock, and the crew lock itself was depressurized, ready to exit the hatch, and through the repressurization process. They've spent a number of hours before, and now uh, you can tell even after, before they actually get out of the suits. The gloves of uh, Mir and Cook have been removed. The suits themselves will have to go through some uh, maintenance activities once they are removed, and uh, Christina Cook and Jessica Mir uh, Uh, are are uh, removed from the suits. Both helmets uh, off. They'll continue to work through the procedures to uh, remove the helmet absorption pads and the remainder of the suit and go through the maintenance activities to get the suits once again ready for spacewalking again this Saturday. Morgan and Parmitano, currently suit RVs, will take the position inside the suits and wrap up the series of spacewalks, the fourth in a series of four, to uh, repair the uh, thermal power that uh, cools the alpha magnetic spectrometer, a uh, scientific experiment gathering data that may reveal the origins of the universe. Again, a successful spacewalk this Martin Luther King Day by Jessica Meir and Christina Cook. Six hours and 58 minutes completing the uh, battery upgrades on the port six truss. Port six, both the uh, 4B and 2B power channels now complete with uh, six new lithium ion batteries, three lithium ion batteries per channel. That work being done and setting the scene for the ninth and final spacewalk planned for Expedition 61 for Morgan and Parmitano to complete the work on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, setting a record for a total number of spacewalks in a single expedition. Until then, the uh, crew will continue removing themselves from the suit and uh, beginning some of the standard maintenance procedures to check out the suits, making sure they're ready for the next spacewalk coming up on Saturday. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston.